welcome to Crunch Time. But Jeff, Booner, Lucas, and Gentry, it's Friday, March 29th. And boys, it's Friday. Feel good Friday. So you know what that means. Friday, baby. And mock drafts. And we're bringing back the full first round. Here we so go, like boys. Like that. Mock draft. But this time we're going to invert the picks. So it's going to go Gentry, Lucas, Booner, me. Okay. So Gentry might mess around and take JJ number one. I might. I might. Uh, just have I'm to excited to see how the boys do. Just taking the best player available. I was a little upset last time with, with Lucas just, just absolutely destroying our draft, just going off, off thing there. So I'm in his spot from last okay. time. Maybe I'll do the same thing, boys. Hey, Will Quick, ETN. He says, sup, boys, on a mini vacation in Vegas with a fan, so won't be able to watch live. Go kill it for me, boys. I love you, ETN. You enjoy your time in Vegas. Fuck yeah. My guy. It's all good. Oh, you can yeah. catch back. Uh, rewatch the show. Let's go have fun, man. Vegas. Friday, yeah. man. Go to a strip club or something. It's fun. Yeah, uh, it's we... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, real quick, before we get to Adam's comment, I do want to give a shout-out. Eric Ray, first one in. Eduardo O'Neill. Um, of course, we got Big Play oh. Jay in here. Big Play Jay, I saw he sent the fan mock traps, but we'll uh, we'll get to his later in the show. Mike Reed, fuck yeah, all day Shout Detroit Mike sports, Reed. and of course Adam Baydoo is in the chat as as well. Call he says, I one day you. wish to love someone as much as Booner loves JJ. There is one person he loves as much as I love JJ. And it is confirmed. I know it as a personal level of Adam is a friend. Alavila, he loves Alavila. Oh, uh, as much I thought you were gonna say Kyle Alavila. Shanahan. You love Troy Weaver, oh, too. Alavilla. Him and Jeff over Kyle Shanahan is something. That's that's something that, like, you shouldn't – the kids shouldn't be allowed to see Jeff and Adam talk about Kyle Shanahan. It shouldn't be allowed. At least hey, he's, he's an Alavilla guy. Yeah. He, he's, a, he's an Alavilla guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? That's, yeah, I, I like that rumor. Let's start that rumor, actually. Adam, Al- Adam made it. Alavilla guy. Big Alavilla guy. I should tweet that. I might, I might put that out in the, the Twitter space, the Twitter – Sphere. Well, I'll tell you what the Red Wings fear. Uh, we got Gentry back. Oh, I mean, shit. Gentry. I mean, <laughs> again, we're doing our annual checkup with not only Mr. BMG, Michael Gentry himself, but also you got to speak to the fans. Like this is like, like they're like everyone's like, what is what is Gentry going to say? What is he going to say? What is he going to say? Like, what is Gentry? What do you have to say right now, Gentry? What's going on? Well, that game yesterday, I said it the day before, that wasn't going to be an easy game. So I wasn't expecting much out of that. I was expecting them to at least show a pulse and, you know, can at least show some fight. But, you know, that didn't happen. But to their favor, Philly and Washington both did lose. So the standings didn't move around too much. But the Red Wings obviously didn't come away with any points and they looked fucking terrible. So, I mean... If they want to make the playoffs, you're going to have to, down the stretch, you're going to have to beat teams like Carolina, and you're going to have to put in a way better effort than we seen last night if you're going to want to have any sort of hopes to make the playoffs. But yesterday, another disgraceful game, and it really just got out of hand early. It like it was like they never stood a chance. So overall, tough game. Give me like a scale from 1 to 10. What's the, what's the panic level right now? Where are you at? I mean, I I can't even say that uh, my panic level's up there because I'm I'm really not expecting much. Like, oh, as bad as that sounds. He's throwing in the say, towel. Oh, I, I don't want to say I'm totally That's checked out. But like, I would say my effort level is about what the Red Wings put out last night. So, if, on, if that's a fair comparison. I need I need more from you, Gentry. I need, like, we need to get the positive vibes towards you <laughs> to even have a chance. I mean, we dude, can't give they, up on them like now. I said, if they played with half a pulse and, you know, at least showed something that, I mean, I didn't expect them to beat that Carolina team, but you just had to go out there and at least contend with them, like, you know, make it somewhat close. And when it, it's out of the gates like that and you're having defensive lapses all over, it's just like, it just seems like the team didn't care, man. And I'm, I'm curious to see if the chat, if they even give a shit anymore, but like, it was just a rough go and, it's really been these past like three weeks. They've been a rough watch in general. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. Gentry said it well. Um, they just laid down and and died. died. They night. died. Yeah, they literally died. Oh uh, well, not, I guess not completely, but they're like kind of twitching. You know, they're we're gonna see if they're if they're awake or not. I mean, that's rough, Gentry. Uh, thank you. That that's your uh, annual Gentry reporting 
uh, giving his Red Wings update. Uh, we do a mental health checkup uh, on him because he is our friend. Look at him. He's doing good. Look at him. Stash I'm, looks I'm good. I'm okay. And, you know, like, I don't want to say it's totally out of proportion. They could come back. They could string back some uh, together some wins. But now they're t- depending on a lot of the opposing teams to lose in order for them to get in because they can't gain much ground when you're always losing when they're losing. And yeah. they're, you're winning when they're winning. And no, no, I – Please, God, no. God, no. And God, I was kind of defending him a lot earlier on in the year because, like, some of his plays were bad, and then he would kind of make up for it. But, like, lately, man, he is, he's been brutal, and there's no way you can defend him, especially if it, after the last two games with passing up on that open one-timer and then yesterday gives up that brutal two-on-one, pretty much a one-on-one. But, yeah, Jeff Petrie, going, he's going through a, a rough stretch. Yeah, just the Jeff, man. I can't, I can't, I can't imagine he's back next year. Those Jeffs. I mean, brother. I can't imagine a lot of these players with Those given Jeffs. the effort down the stretch are back next year. I think the, the roster is going to be cleaned up, honestly. Rebuild mode? No, Whoa. not rebuild Whoa. mode. Whoa. More like clean up because they, do, they have some solid pillars on their team and they have some solid young guys. But I think some of the, should I say, veterans kind of, a lot of them actually have to get extended next year too. guys like Fabry and Perron and whatnot. And those guys, I, I don't want to say they played themselves out of a contract, but like down this stretch, it really hasn't helped uh, the chatter about bringing those guys back within next year. That's just my opinion on it because I mean, this, these stretch of games have meant so much to the Red Wings and a lot of these guys have came, have come out flat rather. The puck knower. I like that. Uh, they, <laughs> that's Man, that's fucking puck. I'll have to, I'll, I'm pretty sure there's some legal complications with that name regarding Lucas, so I'll, I'll, I'll have to reach out. No, I, no, there's no ramifications on my end. I don't know yeah. Puck like that. I don't know Puck. <laughs> there, there's about, right. I'm going to say this, too, to Lucas's nickname. Lucas is the ball knower here on our show. There are about 800 million people that call themselves the ball knower around the world, which is it's just it's so funny. To, like, it's just like people who are like a, a 10-year-old kid would be like, I'm the ball knower. I know ball. Do you know ball? <laughs> Lucas knows ball. He's the ball. It's player. our is it it's you should our... trademark that, Lucas, because a lot of people say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's already trademarked. That yeah. You let the people very decide. Quick, you let the people decide. Yeah, right, Lucas never came up with that name. That was never your name, Lucas. Mm-mm. I don't think nope. yeah, you never came up with that name. I think that the people just the, like the, no, the I don't people. think any of us thought of our name. Um, but but Booner, yours was always that. So like you didn't it wasn't Since really I was that was in like you, seventh yeah, grade. Yours has always been though. <laughs> Um, yeah, but you know, fellas, we are going to get into sports. We're going to get into, you know, everything related to funny things and, you know, talking sports, but, um, I, I do want to kind of speak about Jonathan Kloss real quick because, um, we, we did, you know, we did, we did work with him. Um, and, and he was our friend, um, not as, and again, I want to make this very clear too. I've always been somebody that I don't necessarily, it doesn't, it rubs me the wrong way when people, whenever there is someone that is deceased or passes away, that there are people that come out and say, yeah, we were best friends. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we were so close like that bothers me. Um, So I don't want this to be like, you know, John was, we were super, super close with John. But what I will say is to those who um, were close to them um, and his family, um, like our thoughts, thoughts and prayers are with them. I mean, just to name a couple of the heavyweights who originally brought John on is an intern, Easy, Spenny, yeah. um, JB, uh, who was actually supposed to hang with John this weekend. Yeah. JB um, and John were close. Yeah. Very. So, and again, he was, John was a very, he was a 22 year old. This is his birthday today. So happy birthday, John. Yeah. Um, yeah so, you know, it, it, it's on, it's very unfortunate. I hate it. It, it, it is, it kind of grounds you in a way because it makes you think about life and it makes you think about how quickly it can be gone and how we're very lucky to be able to do what we do. Like the mm-hmm. fact that again, all four of us are here, we're healthy, we're talking to each other, um, our families, like it, it does kind of ground you in a way. So I, I did want to just express my thoughts and prayers. Um, and, and you guys can That's obviously true. speak on it, but just to John, his family and, um, I just hope that he will be remembered as someone who loves sports, absolutely loves sports. He worked at, he worked at Bally, loved wrestling, loved basketball. Um, and he's just a bright dude, man. Like nobody, 
I mean, I saw people talking about you know the the whole incident and giving their opinion on what happened. And again, if you don't know what happened, you can go read about it. it it's already posted. I don't I don't want to get into specifics, but um, just a tragic loss, man. Just mm-hmm. just a good just a good person at the end of the day. Like he he really 100%. was. So um, I just wanted to 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 kind of address that, guys. Before we get into that, I just think it'd be bad. I just don't like. We have to. It, it's like the elephant in the room. Like John, yeah. it, it has mm-hmm. it kind of just affected me today. Um, just because, again, I was just thinking about a lot of things and how John's goal was to eventually get on air and have his show. And here we are, like making jokes and we have our own channel and we have a lot of fun with it. But it just makes me more thankful that I have you guys and and I have we have the chat here that tunes in. And and uh, man, I just yeah, again, like my thoughts and prayers are with his family and friends. So it's tragic. It's absolutely. Yeah, tragic. I mean, I'll say this this about John, too, is and I'm Lucas probably can can second this as well is like. When we were doing behind the scene work at Woodward, he was someone who I would say like always, I would say he always tried to put his foot forward. Like, like, let me, let me get involved more. Let me do this. Let me do that. And it was someone he, like John was someone who like wanted to be great. And he was he, like mm-hmm. 22 years old today would have been. And it's like, he, he was so young. Um, mm-hmm. Someone that young that was trying so hard to, you know, wanted to get his foot in the door and just try everything he can to get better and better and better. Um, I remember when I was doing clips and stuff for the heavyweights, um, he was someone that was sending them through and, and I was always back and forth with him on how to, you know, how to get better and like what clips this, that just to keep getting better. And he was someone that was always like willing to like take that. And and he, you know, he wanted, he, he wanted to do social with Lucas and I, and we were always just trying to help him out, like teach him, like, this is what you need to do. This is it. And he was always just willing to learn. Um, just wanted to get better it just it's 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 terrible to see stuff like someone that's our age doing what we were doing um that we worked with and you know we would go in the back in woodward and he would be there some days and just always happy i remember when i got woodward nights the show and that got greenlit you know the first time i mm-hmm. saw him since you know that got greenlit he was like extremely happy for like it's just he was just an all-around do- good dude i've never seen him down or, or mad or, or going at yeah. someone nothing They're, like those people in this industry dude it's such it's one of those industries where there's so many bad people and, and bad apples and, and he was like the one of the best apples out there you know what i mean and, mm-hmm. and he would do anything dude like there was weekends like where i had to go do stuff and he would he would fill in and post for me and clip for me and do things for me without even like questioning even if he had something to do he'd be like nope i want an opportunity so you know, prayers to his family, you know, guys like the heavies, JB and those guys who were even more like very close with him. Um, it's, 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 it's brutal, dude. It's tragic. Cause you know, it, it shows how important life is doing the yep. things we do, especially like the people in the chat, like we do all this for you guys. And, and, you know, John, he loved Detroit sports and he also loved, you know, doing videos for people and doing things like that. So, um, prayers to his family and everyone too, that that's kind of affected by that. It's, 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 it's yeah. bad. It sucks. I, I think both of you guys said said it very well, and there's not much more to put on top. But John was just, he was a very pure human being and just one of those people that was the last thing that he deserved happened to him. Um, I believe he did have a brother too, so prayers out to him especially because I'm sure that's mine and just whole, just like your life reality, everything is just shaking up. So it sucks, man. But um, like you guys said, we're fortunate and let's just keep moving forward and use this as like a little extra motivation to keep going and have success because I think John – knowing like the man that he was the dude that he was would want to see us succeed so just keep moving that can be a little extra fuel in our tank to make sure that we can see the light at the end of the tunnel Mm -hmm. absolutely um i wanted to to kind of get that that message out there um just Mm -hmm. to again share some appreciation for the human being he was uh Mm because i just i don't i wouldn't feel right if we did a whole show and just didn't ignore something that again at least locally and among all people from Woodward and, and everyone he's affected his family. So I want to make sure we represent John in, in the best way possible there. So love you, John. Um, yeah. And yeah, like I said, it's, it's just tragic, but boys, we do, we have sports to get to. And like I said, some lions news that came out today, actually that I, it was kind of random to be honest with you, the Brock Wright signing a, an, an offer sheet with the 49ers. Isn't Man. he? Isn't Hit he that with, panic button? Well, yeah. Well, it's funny. He didn't even play against the 49ers, did he? No. No. He got yeah, hurt. He, was he got hurt, I believe, halfway through the season. Okay. So yeah, he didn't he didn't play against the 49ers, but the 49ers gave him an offer sheet. So the Lions originally gave him, I think he's a restricted free agent. 
So they can match. They have the opportunity to match the offer um, that the 49ers gave to them. They haven't matched it yet. I I believe it was reported in Booner. I, I, I don't know if you've heard some things of the same. Um, yeah, I have a that couple the things. Lions offered him uh, originally an offer, and he waited. He took this offer. Some of the Lions have already offered him, but now they have a chance to match the new offer, and we'll see if that happens or not. But yeah, I mean, the, the real storyline is: Does Carly Johnson got to move? Mike, or what's going on with that? Uh, the Red Wings are losing their reporter, too. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the wings are long. taking the a lot of hits, for, man. For wings are taking hits from everywhere. Yeah, what? That's... Yeah, Brock Wright, fellas. Yeah, hey, Scott Bischoff drafted a tight end. He it did. might not be as crazy as some people think late in the draft. I'll just say I, that. I will throw this out there. The numbers and everything, it's – it's so he originally – I think so what happens is, is I don't think the offer for the Lions – I think what happened is he, the deal the deal was done. But I think teams around the league, once that deal is uh, offered and, and kind of, hey, we're, this is he's accepting this, I think teams can match as well and say – and then I think there's another – I could be wrong with that, but I know the Lions, it was like one year for like $2.9 or something like that, and – um, the D or the, the 49ers, they came back and they matched that and they threw him three years for basically 12 million. So it, for him, I think it's kind of a no brainer, like a one year, 2.9, yeah. or would you rather have a three year deal to where you're guaranteed the next three years of your career, you're going to have $12 million coming in. I think that's almost a no brainer brainer for a, a backup tight end like that. Like I have three years of job security on a team that as well is going to be competing for a Super Bowl. And it's uh, a million more per year at four million a year. So I think it was like a no brainer for him. Now, well, I don't know if the Lions like I, I looked at his stats the last couple of years. He three years, four hundred and twenty-four yards, seven touchdowns. I don't know if the Lions will match it. I, I don't know where you guys are on it with that. It, it's just to <laughs> me, it's and I'm guessing all three of you are gonna say no. It's just really a I don't. I don't know. It's like that backup tight end. I think he was our second best tight end personally. As a, like he he was a pretty good, he was a really he was a good blocker and, and as well yeah. as he did have some big moments and in, in bigger games as well. Um, and and I think if you're looking at a tight end too, that's kind of what you want uh, out of him is is kind of someone who can make plays and big moments when you need someone to step up. Um, and that can block. And, and he did both. So I don't think it, like if they offered him and they kind of countered it, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, why would they? Why would yeah. they pay him that? I, I wouldn't care. Like I'd be like, okay, let's go. Brock Wright, tight end too. I like that. But again, like I think it opens up a lot for the draft now. It's you can get a guy a tight end too that's a lot cheaper. Yeah, this yeah, is mean, go ahead, devastating. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was about to say he he definitely was always kind of showed up when he was called upon and he did make some big plays and he was useful for the way we did use him. But I mean, for I mean, three years, twelve million for Brock Wright. I I, I don't think it's gonna happen. And like I liked him as a player, and I'm very uh, thankful for the time he did put in because he was a valuable uh, asset at one point in time. But they still do have Zilstra. They still do have Mitchell, I believe. So mm -hmm. I mean, they can maybe even look into the draft. So I don't think allocating you know twelve million over the next three years to a backup tight end when you could probably get someone you know, just as good, maybe even a veteran to kind of be a placeholder right there. So, I mean, I like Brock Wright, but I don't, I don't think it's worth the money. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think, Lucas? This, this is something that, Hey, it's the NFL Brock Wright. You were very fine tight end too. I'll always remember <laughs> that, that boot, that bootleg against the New York Jets where Jared rolled out to the right, threw back across the field to the left. And there you went, young man. There you went. And I, he did have another play like that. I, I forget which game it was this year, but he did have another big play on, I believe it was third down, maybe even fourth down. But no, Brock Wright, if he goes to San Francisco, great. I honestly, if they re-signed him and matched that offer, I would be in the camp where I'd be a little upset with that amount, amount of money when you look at there's still some veteran tight ends out there that you could probably get on a one-year deal for less money. You right. can go on the draft, but it, it is what it is, man. Like Gentry said, Brock Wright, thank you for your time. But it's time to move on. <laughs> yeah, very fine. I don't know if I know. I, you know what? And the thing about Brock is and it's it's not like he was the worst. Like James Mitchell didn't necessarily play well when you expected him to kind of take that jump. So Brock was solid. He was solid. But I think what he brought is the the blocking, the stuff yeah. that Sam La you didn't want Sam Laporta to do, kind of the dirty work. And to me, that's not something you're going to sit there and be like, damn 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 we let him get away <laughs> like you can go you you got to find a tight end that kind of has that skill set but they will be able to do that like he's replaceable uh, let's be real here um fundamental guy dan campbell guy but 
yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll they'll be all right. I like Brock Reddy. Like he, you know, he'll make a play. You know, when, when it's there. Didn't he have a? I can't remember the game it was, but Goff hit him over the top. Yeah. For like a twenty-five yard TD, and it was just like a it was a clean play. I don't know. <laughs> maybe the chat can help me out about that. I don't know if it was the postseason or it was towards the end of the regular season. Was that uh, was, was that not against the Chargers? I could be wrong. I mean, it, dude, he had like the biggest cut, one of the biggest catches of the year. Yeah, that the I'm not about the Jets, the drag route. I'm talking about like, oh, like a, Mike knows yeah, what I'm talking uh, about because he yeah, scored. Sure I think it was the Chargers. I, yep, it was the Chargers. The Chargers. Right. Um, but regardless, like, you know, solid, but like Lucas and you guys all said, like, they'll be all right. They'll probably draft it. I wouldn't be shocked if fifth, sixth round, they just take a tight end, put, put his hey. head in the dirt block, you know, or Someone you can sign a Bobby Tanyan, sign a Bobby Tanyan. Is he, is he a good block? I don't, I don't know as much yeah. about yeah, Robert Tanyan. He'd be all right. But I know, like, I'm trying to think of the other one. I think CJ Uzama and then, like, the only other noteworthy one would be, like, Logan Thomas, who's basically playing in a cast at this point. <laughs> <laughs> man, man steps on the field and it's just instant engine reserve. So, yeah, yeah I think they'll go in the draft. And it, it yeah. was the Chargers. Thank you guys for that. See the chat? They, they got I it. Knew it. Yeah, the, char- the Chargers play. Because I remember I remember we were watching the game. I'm pretty sure we were together uh, yeah. watching the game. And we're like, we're like, uh, Sam Laporte. And they we're like, oh, no, it's no. Brock. <laughs> <laughs> it's the other white tight end. All right. That, that's what it was. Um, but, yeah, I mean, hey, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Lions will find a way to replace him. I wouldn't match the – I don't know what the, the terms are, but I, I wouldn't match that. Uh, Sarah says the Chargers, and he had one in the playoff game against the Bucks, I believe. Yeah, he, again, solid, but – They'll be all right. You know what happened today, though, fellas? Speaking, you brought up CJ. Uh, uh, what's how do you say pronounce his last name? Uz- Uzama. 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 Mm-hmm. Former Jets tight end. Jets are being aggressive. They just went and got Hassan Reddick for a no, conditional third this. round pick. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, Jeff, yeah. Jeff was not happy in the group chat when he when he saw this notification. Well, in I'll explain. All right, because I I, I was throwing a little I was throwing a little temper tantrum, Booner, and I'm gonna let Booner well, cook here. Hold on, Boone. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna tell you where I'm coming from, and then I'm gonna let Boone kind of give you're me. You're an seat. interesting person, Jeff. You're a very interesting person. We've <laughs> talked about Hassan Reddick on this show before. This is why I'm out. The text yeah. confused me today. Yeah, I talked about how. If there was a target, I I just I knew it. I knew the Eagles were going to trade him. I, I could just feel it. They, they signed Bryce Huff. You know, they went and they're they're trading players away, um, or excuse me, not trading players, but they're signing players. So I assume they'd be trading some players away. I knew it'd be an edge. Um, and I, I if Hassan Reddick's got one year left on his deal, so I'm like, man, if they can get a, a guy like Hassan Reddick, I thought it'd be towards the trade deadline to be honest with you. Um, but the Jets traded a I want to make sure I get all the details right here so I can make sure we, we get the information they traded a conditional it's a third round pick and if it becomes a second if Reddick plays 67.5 percent of the snaps and has 10 or more sacks if not it's a third but if he does that which he's been healthy majority of his career for the most part and he's had I mean he's coming out he's like 50 sacks last four years um they want they, they need 10 sacks and he gets they get a, a um, second round pick so when I first saw it, I'm like, and then again, remind you guys that if he leaves the Jets, they get a pick. So they'll get a pick back if he leaves in free agency. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they want to extend them. But I'm just saying, if he doesn't, they, they'll get a pick back. When I first saw it, I'm like, damn, man, like, like it hurts, you know, like the, the good football <laughs> players, especially on the edge, they're just, you know, they're available. And And here's where I kind of grounded myself because in Booner, you brought this up and it's something I thought about. That's why I tweeted out. I hope the lions were in on them as in, I hope they called and they're like, wait, what's, what's what's a Hassan Reddick? What, what, what are we talking about? And if the Eagles said, Hey, we're not trading Hassan Reddick to a team that we're probably going to face in the postseason, One of the best teams in the NFC. That's fine. I'll take that. But man, if they weren't even interested that's where I'm like, again, guys, eventually, eventually. And, and, and people brought up to me, hey, what about an extension? You're not going to extend him. I don't give a damn. You have him for one year. He, he he had 11 sacks last year, 16 the year prior. Like this dude, now this is not a Davenport. This is a, this is a player. He's a damn good football player Jesus. for a year to help you go chase a Super Bowl. Because Dan mentioned it today. Talk with Tim Twentyman. What did he say? We're in the, the second phase of our team, meaning – we want a trophy. That's what we want. We want a trophy. 
So I just saw someone that could help get that trophy. And I'm like, damn. But at the end of the day, guys, I'll, I'll give it to you, Boone, on this. Like, I get it. I, I, I get it. If the Eagles looked at the Lions and were like, nah, we're not trading you, Hassan Reddick, nothing you can do. But eventually, like some of these trades, you're going to have to get in on a little bit. Not maybe to Hassan because it's the Eagles, but if there's someone available to trade to the line, please go get them. Please go get them. So Especially if it's an edge, Boone. I, I want to ask you this too, Jeff, before I go, because I'm going to go and I'm going to, I'm going to rant for a little bit on this uh, because this is just another one of those, it's like the eighth time this summer that we have to try and like calm people down because, oh, the Lions didn't get a, a big name. Uh, I want to ask you this too, Jeff, because we did, I'm not talking about like a couple days ago when we talked about Hassan Reddick. I'm talking about um, weeks ago. We had this conversation about Hassan Reddick and, and I think I was on the side originally where I was like, yeah, I would, I would like him. And I think we had in, in the group, we kind of agreed saying, if, if Hassan Reddick does come to the Lions, like you're not going to be I, – I believe he was the player that we were con- having the conversation about a few weeks back or about a month ago. It was, would you guys be mad if they, they traded away capital to bring in Hassan Reddick? And we all were like, no, we wouldn't be mad. Is it something we wanted to do? And I think this is the player where we all were like, no, it's not someone we're going to sit there and go after. Am I wrong on that? Was that the player? Wasn't it Hassan Reddick? I think me and Jeff were very, like, pro – Hassan Reddick, like bring him in, and then you guys and I. I don't know where Gentry stood, but I remember they, you guys weren't like all for it, but you weren't against it. I think it was more so a thing to where it was like, if they brought him in, it's like okay, cool, like they they got a, but like we're not going to sit here and chase after a guy like this. Mm-hmm. Th- this is just this is just where I'm at with this, fellas. I'm a little, and I don't want, and it sounds like oh, Booner, you're you're a Brad Holmes slappy, Booner, you're you're a slappy. Yeah, I love the I love the Lions. I'm uh, the, the Booner path, all of that. I drink the Kool Aid. Yes, that's me and all those videos. There there is a side to where I don't care if people criticize Brad Holmes. Let's break it down. Let let's see what he does and what what's bad, what's good and bad, and what he missed on. The the whole every time there's a big name on the market, whether it's trade or free agency, and they go to a different team whether it's AFC, NFC, and we have to sit there and and we have to just hear people complain about Brad Holmes not getting this guy or going after this guy, it is, to me, it's one of the more ridiculous things in the, in the world. Like, there are so many, and I'm, I'm saying there are so many big-name guys on there that we've complained about and Lions fans have complained about. It, 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 I mean, I don't know. At this point, it just, to me, it, it feels like, fellas, that it's just people are just trying to complain to complain when it comes down to it. They're trying to find something. And and if you truly thought, and, and I'm just going to be honest here, if you guys truly, truly thought that the Philadelphia Eagles, a team that's trying to contend for the NFC Championship game, would even consider giving Hassan Reddick to the Detroit Lions, a team they probably will see late January – and, and and give them a one-two punch of Aiden Hutchinson and Hassan Reddick, you are living in absolute la-la land. You don't belong to sit here and talk about football if you really think the Philadelphia Eagles would have sent Hassan Reddick, someone with 52 sacks in the last three seasons or four seasons, over to the Detroit Lions to pair him up with Aiden Hutchinson to see them in late January. That was never going to happen. You're living in la-la land. It was never going to happen. When we start talking about free agents and trades and different people that are good potential for the Detroit Lions, why don't we just actually start talking about like smart things that that like every single person isn't a fit for the Detroit Lions. Situations aren't going to work. Contracts aren't going to work. Everything just because he was a good football player at, at points of their career doesn't mean it's a good fit for this football team. There are so many free – like, to me, it's like, okay, now who's the next – I text Jeff this today. All right, who's the next guy that that, that we're going to sit here and complain about? That's Xavier Howard, J.C. Jackson, Justin Simmons. I've got all these names here. Dory Jackson, Quandre Diggs, Stephon Gilmore, Michael Gallup, everyone. There, there are 100 there's, – there's 15 more guys that I've heard fans say, we want them in Detroit. So what? Every single time one of those guys signed, we're going to all complain and, oh, Brad, why didn't you get this guy? Why We can't get all of them. So what are we doing here? It's I just have to do this like every other week. And and again, I don't care if you criticize Brad. Be very realistic about it. He was never going to come to Detroit. They were never going to trade him to the Detroit Lions. Stop going at Brad Holmes for unrealistic things just because you want clicks or you want people to – I don't care. I don't want to see that stuff anymore. It's, it's absolutely insane. It's, it's blasphemy, as Stephen A. Smith would say. Move on. Move on. I don't even know yeah. what you guys want to say about the Sonretic stuff anymore because I don't even think this should be a conversation. All right. Boys. No, but 
Bruder, I, I think me and you kind of have had the same take on this since day one. I'm just not sure that Brad Holmes is willing to give up capital for a possible possible rental. And even if he did, I think a guy like Hassan Reddick, he might be scared of the extension. And Jeff, I kind of want to get what you want to say on that. And then I like at the end of the day, it's it's not the end of the world. Like we still have the draft to address address the edge. And I, like Booner, I'm so head uh, head to head with you on this. Like it seems like every time there's a new player out there that was rumored to go to the Lions, or there was a Twitter post about to go to the Lions, we flip out and overreact. We still have the draft to move and you know address that position. And who knows? Like maybe there is a player out there that Brad is willing to trade for and actually extend, and he's kind of waiting on that domino to fall. If he's not willing to extend Reddick or Reddick isn't viewed long term here, Brad was it was never a possibility for Brad. That's my opinion. Hmm. Yeah. Ahead, no, I hey Booner Booner was speaking to the people there. I don't have anything to add on there. Was a very so you were, you're in lockstep? You agree? Yeah, yeah. I mean I, I just to his point, there's no way Howie Roseman is one of the top three, four GMs in the NFL. And he knows that Brad Holmes is right there with him, and the roster talent wise is very similar. So, no, it would be an idiotic move for the Philadelphia Eagles to do that. And I think if it was reverse and like the Detroit Lions had Hassan Reddick and the Philadelphia Eagles need him, everyone in Detroit would be up in arms if Brad were to ship him to Philadelphia. Yes. I agree with that, actually. <laughs> I, I, no, I honestly, I do. I think Booner, it was well said from Booner um, because I, I, I get where he's coming from, certainly, um, especially with just how fans are. I mean, guys, it's short for fanatic. I mean, every, they're, they're, they're fanatics. I mean, of course, uh, you want the best players. And that's why I said, like, I get it. I, I get the the whole, like, hey, I don't want to trade this player to this team. It's going to help their chances. Like, I understand where I was coming from is I, I just hope we get to a point where Brad's in these conversations, maybe not Hassan, but I'm just talking about in general, like the whole, when people say, you know, Brad doesn't want to give up draft capital. Like at some point guys, you're going to have to give up draft capital. Like he just gave one up for Carlton Davis. So he's willing to give up a, what was that? A third round pick for Carlton Davis who has one year, year uh, one year left on his deal. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's possible he'll do it. It's got to be for the right guys though. Like Boone said, I just, I, I do, I, I, and I think Brad gets this. I, I just want to know if he called. I was just curious, like, I, because not that it matters if he got him or not, but the fact that Brad was intrigued by it, or if Brad called and was like, "Hey, you know, what are we thinking for Hassan?" Like, just the fact that he's searching, because like Hassan Reddick is a type of player. There's going to be more like him that are going to be available. It, it happens all the time in the NFL. There will be guys like him, and I get he has to check the box for the Lions. That can help raise your ceiling. We just talked about yesterday, the NFC North getting better. The NFC is obviously improving. It's the NFL, not for long. Teams go up, teams go down. But we are officially Super Bowl contenders. Like, you know what I mean? You can't just sit back, drink a margarita, and win five Super Bowls. Like, do you get where I'm kind of coming from, Booner, with it? Like, I'm not saying go get every. I, do, I get what you're saying. Everyone wants everybody. But there, if it is the real... right guy, like okay. – And that, that, okay, I'm glad aggressive. you – I'm very glad you said that because if it is the right money guy, to make money. do it. You do, but you. But again, if you want to be, if, if you want to maintain in this league, you have to find a way. Like there, there is a reason, like a rhyme and a reason for everything Brad Holmes does. Whether it's uh, capital, whether whether it's um, the the uh, I'm drawing a blank here. Whether it's money or whether it's guy kind of getting guys younger and building off the rookie con, whatever the like the the situation is, there's a reason Brad Holmes does what he does, and and, and as well, just like he said, he said this in a press conference too. And there's a reason why he doesn't do things that he doesn't do. Like there's a reason behind all of it. Right. Him not going after Hassan Reddick, there's a reason behind that. I'm sure. And and him not going after Daniil Hunter, or maybe he did, and, and and not getting him. There's a reason behind all of these things, fellas. And this is where I get a little frustrated with Lions fans, to where they are expecting, let's go all in, all in. And I get it's like a Super Bowl this year. We want that, but you just need to upgrade this. You just went to an NFC Championship game. It's not like you made the wild card and maybe you won a wild card game, got to the second weekend, and you lost. No, you got to the NFC Championship game. You just need to upgrade a little bit. And then you're in the you're in the battle there, and like if it, it if it was different if they just got won the division maybe lost in the wild card, yeah, there's probably a lot of holes and a lot of things you need to fix there. But I'm not gonna sit here and, and say, oh, like Brad, bad job. He should have gone after. 
I, I'm just not going to keep doing that after every single player, a big player gets traded or a big player comes off the board um, in free agency. It's just, it's at this point, it's repetitive and it's annoying. Let's let's sit down and talk about this. Let's not just go online and, and put videos and tweets out there and and things out there being like, oh, the, the Brad Holmes is such a bad GM. He missed out on Hassan. Like, dude, there's 30 plus teams that also didn't get Hassan Reddit. There, did the 49ers reach out? Did, did the Chiefs reach out? Did any of these teams that you're contending with reach out? No, I'm sure they didn't as well. There's there, there's a rhyme and a reason for everything that's done. Just because it was a, a Shiny diamond of a player doesn't mean that he needs to be in Detroit. Yeah, All right, I'm sorry, Rant's over. And, well said. Yeah, and I think the other thing too, Jeff, with that is when Dan, I believe it was either yesterday or the day before, was sitting out with Tim Twentyman. He even said he's like, "We're now entering phase two. Yes. So I think this is the time where both Dan and Brad, like this year's trade deadline, mm-hmm. if there's a guy like Matthew Judon who's playing in New England, who's a hell of a defensive end up there in age, but they're obviously not winning anytime soon. I think when you look at guys like that around the trade deadline, I think that's when we can expect Brad to start doing it if he does, just because at this point, I feel with the moves that he's made, his draft board as far as who he wants is probably pretty solidified. Now, will those guys be there? He obviously doesn't know. But is he going to be like, okay, do we want to go trade a third round pick for Hassan Reddick? Or do we want to bank on the upside? I'm throwing out a completely random player here. Yeah. Bank on the upside and the potential development of a Marshawn Nealand. Obviously, it doesn't have to be him, but throw in any player you want on the edge there in the draft. And I think that's probably where he's kind of going with it. So real quick, too, with that, Lucas, th- this is where, like, if you want to go at Brad Holmes and kind of judge him a little bit, and this is something I will do this year, as someone who's a Brad Holmes, as people want to sit here and say a slappy, no, I'm going to go at him as well because this is actually, if we're, if, we're being, if we're being honest, this is a massive, massive year in draft for him when it comes to the defensive line and in the edge because you didn't get anyone in free agency. We saw that now. You didn't trade for anyone. You didn't do that. Guess what? You need another defensive end and, and, and an edge rusher on this football team. That isn't done yet. That's something I put in my notes here. Do we need another edge rusher? Yes. If, is Brad going to get one? Yes. Now it's down to how, like, can you actually get us one? Because in the last couple of years, you've drafted a couple edges and they have not produced and they have not been good. Now it's time, like, you ha- that's something that you need to do for us and you need to bring us someone that can pr- produce, like, instantly. So that's where we can really, if, you, if, you, if you're really talking football here, that's where we can judge Brad Holmes. Get us an edge in the draft. Show us you can and- do that. And I, I get, and that's where kind of my thinking is. It's it, and again, it's not necessarily Hassan Reddick, even though it's somebody that I've wanted. Like I get the semantic, I get how the process works. Like I'm not blind to that, but like it is kind of, I think, unrealistic unless the Lions trade up in the draft in the first round to get an edge that we expect like another James Houston that you just draft and gets a sack a game. Like I, I just don't. It, it's hard to find those guys. So not only is it a, a, an important draft, just like every draft. But to me, Booner, it's an important trade deadline, I think. So it, it's both to me. Like, Because if this team, if let's say we come out and Davenport's not really living up and Houston's kind of struggling a little bit, like you got to go get a dude. Because y- when you think you have a good football team, it's okay to go get some help, lose a, a, a draft pick or two to go get a fair. stud, to get proven I'll, talent. So we'll I'll see. Tell you if that's a, I'll tell you if that's a fair point, Jeff, if, if that's a fair point in October. When that time comes okay. and, and you right. draft, like, again, yeah. it's I keep saying judge Brad Holmes after the draft. See what positions you have and what players you have. And then when it comes to this trade deadline thing, if you draft an edge rusher and he's not giving you pr- production and Davenport's hurt and all you have yeah. is, you know, James Houston out there. All right, now like, now we can have this conversation. And in, in, in October, guess what, Brad? You missed on the edge for the last two or three years. Now you need to address it because we are actually trying to win a Super Bowl this year. It's not last year anymore you're in a different – like, you're where the 49ers were last tra- trade deadline. Yeah. But you need guys to produce. Agreed. Well, speaking of uh, having players that can help you get over the top, according to 33rd team, they had a mock draft today, and they think a player that could help the Lions get over the top at pick 29 is Michigan's own Mikey Sandler still. Cool. Oh, Chop Robinson for a second. Thank God. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. well I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the picks before. So this is what this so you is really the pick. threw that one off a little bit. Yeah. No. Well, well here here's the build up. I'm building up. I'm building up a little bit here. Okay. So we got <laughs> so we got Brian Thomas at 17. You got Byron Murphy at 18. Jared Verse goes 19 to the Rams. I know ETN would like that one. Amarius Mims, Cooper DeGene in the door. Look at him. Nate Wiggins, your guy. Look at that. Please, hey, please, Philly, draft him. 
Please, Isn't that oh back, God. That's back to back mock drafts. The 33rd team had that Nate Wiggins went to the Eagles. The last, yeah, one well, we were, yeah, it's been a common a Philly one, man. For sure. Chop Robinson, you know, you, you got, well, you got Chop yeah. Robinson to the New England Patriots. And then, fellas, real quick, I'll, I'll show you who was available for the Lions when, again, 33rd team felt like Mikey Sandra still was the answer. Here's the pick. Graham Barton goes 25. Jackson Powers Johnson at 26. Zach Frazier, Fraz- uh, 27. Adonis Adani Mitchell at 28. And then, of course, Mike Sandra still at 29. And they have Darius Robinson who goes the pick after. I want to make sure I, people can see this real quick. Uh, Xavier Worthy, 31 to the 49ers. And then Jordan Morgan, tackle out of Arizona to the Chiefs. Ow. What, what, what's your guys' first reaction? Because, again, Based on Brad's ideology, best available player. Mm-hmm. Can I make an argument? Mikey Sandra still would be one of the best available players at 29. It's close. It's close. But that's why I think, and you guys know, I said Mikey should be a first round player. I've been saying it. I've had that in my notes. Now. I have that in my notes that you said that. But there's no way that the Lions should take him at pick 29. We talked about selection that would pop possibly make us walk out of the draft party or something like that. Now I'm not oh, saying Mikey Sanders still is a player because I love Mikey as a player, but if you're telling me that we're the first position that we're addressing in the NFL draft is safety. And this is a guy that pretty much does everything that Brian branch does, but I think Brian branch is already better than him. And that's not a knock on Mikey. I just think branch is a hell of a player. I don't, I don't see the logic in this. I understand the best player available, but there's probably two or three receivers that you could say are on the same level of talent as Mike Mikey Sanders still at the safety position. That's right, uh, boy. I'm interested. Can... You know, the the BPA thing is what gets me that we talked about the other day because Mikey yes. is like Lucas said, and that's why I put it in my notes is Mikey is going to be a really really good player. And and the, the example that I thought about when I saw Mikey at 29 was. Uh, Brian Branch last year, like in the second round, when he started dropping and he was available for Brad. I think Brad, I could be wrong. Did he, he trade it up with the Packers for that to where he kind of chased him down a little bit because he saw a guy like that. And when he drafted him in, in a press conference, he said, I don't even know, like we brought CJ Garner Johnson in. I didn't even know when I drafted Brian Branch where we were going to put him. Did not even know if he was going to play or where we were going to put him. And we just were going to figure that out because he was just such a good football player. That's where I get the feeling with the Mike Sanders drill where he's just, he, he he's just a football player and he's yeah. he's probably going to be pretty high up on Dan's board um to where if some of Dan's guy or Brad's board some of Brad's guys get taken off and Mikey's just sitting there and he thinks again Brad does things that that throw people off and he'll he'll mm-hmm. reach at guys just because he likes guys and it's it's a good thing sometimes most of the time so I wouldn't be I wouldn't sit there and be shocked because because you could probably move Mikey around it wherever you wanted to and say, hey, go here. Let's let's transition and learn this, learn this, learn this. And now you have a guy like Mikey Sanders and Brian Branch and that secondary who can play multiple positions, move around, do what they need to do. Like they've proven that both of those guys. So it, it's like having like two ar- like Army Swift Swiss knives or whatever they're called in your Swiss secondary. Army knives. Swiss yeah. Army knives. Yeah, it's like having two <laughs> two of those players that they're just not. Like just they're like really good football players, and they both have like Brian Branch could be an All Pro player at some point, hopefully this year. And Mikey Sanders still is a guy that can go out there and and hopefully at some point in his career be a Pro Bowler or an All Pro. Like these are dudes. That's why I wouldn't be shocked. I would rather go the route of getting a defensive edge or, or someone. I've been so high on Darius Robinson the last couple months that like I would be like let's just get him and move on because we need that. But if we're talking best players, man, Mikey's there. Yeah. I mean, I would still rather prefer an edge, but like you said, we kind of know, obviously, from watching Michigan, what kind of player Mike Sandstrill is and how he's versatile, and you can kind of play him everywhere. He's a dog. He would fit into that locker room. But like like you said, passing up on Darius Robinson or just any edge in general to get him would would kind of, you know, tick me off a little bit and the possibility where you could maybe trade up in the second round and grab him if he's still available. But like I said, I said this a couple of weeks ago, we've been seeing Mike Sandstrill drop and drop and drop as far as mock drafts go. So he's inching towards the first round. And like Booner said, it wouldn't surprise me because at the end of the day, he is a truly like a Brad Holmes type player and he's so versatile. And the way our secondary has taken some hits, we could probably use a player like him. Yeah, you look at picking at 
uh, 29, you're kind of, it's basically a second round pick, but you get a fifth year option. So there is benefits to that. But to me, like processing a possible Mikey Sanders still pick at 29, I, I, I don't hate this at all. Like I, cause it's also, yes, it's Brad's like what his ideology, what he believes best player available, which you could certainly make an argument uh, like Lucas has said before. And, and we agree with them that he is a, Mikey's a damn good player. He's a first round talent. That was a good point. You brought up Booner about Brian branch. Like if they take Mike, Mike Sanders still guys, we're begging them to sign another safety. If they take Mike, that's a, not only is he a good football player, but he's a smart football player. Yeah. Super, super smart. And what is what Aaron Glenn, I think Aaron Glenn said this, if you have good football players, you find a way to get them on the field. You find a way to get these guys out there. He would significantly improve, not at corner, obviously. He's not going to play corner for you, but he would improve that safety room instantly, instantly. And if Kirby gets injured or somebody goes to, if he gets injured, you got Mikey Sand, or you already have him in a rotation potentially, but if someone goes down even, even more of a worst case scenario, man. You and and I want to out there. And then they, they did say also Brian Branch might play more safety this year. So if you yes. want to put Mikey at nickel and move him around, like I, I actually, guys, if this happened, uh, if we're on draft night, I would be cool with it because he is, he's so good. You just figure it out. If that so makes sense. like Steve in the chat says he's not even close to, to Branch's talent. Again, I think Branch is going to be one of the best in the league and he has that potential. I'm not going to sit here and say Mikey is, but I'm just as a football player, He's got that upside, and he, he's just an absolute dog, and he just loves playing football. Like, those are Brad and, and Dan guys to where you know, like, I'm drafting a dude that's going to be able to come in here and compete every single every single day, and that's what Brian Branch does. As he's going to go out there, he might not be as talented as Brian Branch, but he's going to go out there, and he's going to get – yeah, I don't know, 29, dude – does he it's, go in the first round, fellas? Like, I mean, we operate what, on what these what guys, go? right? Like, corner edge, I get that, but, like, football player? I mean, Mike. Yes. Dog. I would love to get him in the second round. If, the, if dog. that's, yeah. I would love like that would be great. A second round pick that'd be awesome to get Mike. That Sanders. that was going to be my question. If we did take this route with the first round pick, how do you think they go with that second round pick? Because you, you do have to, to address the edge. I feel like you have to get one for sure. So is it that next pick, or do they trade up with that next pick? Like, I, yeah. What do you? I mean, what do you think, Lucas? I, I see you over there. I'd be a little hesitant. It, like, I I, it's not that I hate Mikey Sanders still, guys, but if we look right. around, everybody's raving about Ify Melifuanu. So what are we going to – if you're going to move Branch to safety to have him more, then you're going to move Ify Melifuanu down in the box. And you look at just the safety room compared to the other rooms on this team, you take Mikey Sanders still. Again, I do not hate the player, but you're taking a guy in the first round who Kirby could leave, yes, but again, Mikey Sanders still isn't as far as covering the zone of a, of a football field. He's not the best zone guy that you want at your free safety spot. Can he play it? Yes. Do I think he'd be a good player? Yes. But the, you need potentially, you're picking at 29, if you're going to go in the secondary and you don't take a corner, I don't see the logic, and I understand he's a good player, but this is a guy who could potentially be your safety two or three if, if he continues to rise and Brian Branch does the same thing. So I'm saying if you get a, a safety that's your second or third string, that's very good. But I don't think you take that in the first round. I think you can look at a Kalen Bullock, a Cameron Kitchens. You can get those type of guys in the second, third, even fourth rounds, and they would still make an impact, and they wouldn't push anybody out of a room, and you could still address the needs that you want in the first two, three rounds. I, I, I did see, too. Um, I saw someone put in the chat, um, All Day Detroit Sports. Mikey did tweet out about reuniting with Aiden Hutchinson. I'm not going to say who he uh, quoted and who he retweeted or anything, but I'm just going to throw it out there. He did uh, He did address. Well. He did address it and said, "Hey, he, he tagged Aiden Hutchinson and said, Hutch, Hutch, brother, reunion." Would you? Would so, you I mean, say, Mike? Nothing. So, go ahead, Mike. Say it. Yeah. What do you? No, what do you say? You're on, you're on, no, you're on the stand. No. Why. What'd you say? Fuck them. That's oh, why. Fuck them. <laughs> That's why we're not repeating their name. Fuck yeah. Well. Yeah, well, I I, I, do I think will. too. Like there was someone in the chat. I can't, I can't find the, the comment. Someone talked about training back. Yeah, like if you know you're gonna get Mikey Sanders still. Like if Brad's like I'm, I like him and I want that's my guy. Trade back. You're gonna be able yeah, to get him I in the 30s, that. maybe early 40s. Like you're gonna be able to get him, add some capital. And I'm sure Brad's smart enough that he knows that he's gonna do that. Um, it's just like how he's traded back for Jameer Gibbs. Is he was like I'm gonna trade back and hopefully Gibbs is there. And he did. He traded back and yeah. still got the guy he wanted. So trade back into the 30s. People are going to hate it because drafts in Detroit. So a lot of people are there for that. But wait, what? Whoa! There's no hatred over here. 
Not from me. It's MP. Um, we know who's talking to Booner. Yeah. No, he's just, talking. We can just sit back. We can just sit I, back. I, 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 boys, I said <laughs> months ago, not months, weeks ago, Mikey Sanders still should go to the Packers or the Cowboys yeah, in the first you, round you because they that. need safeties. I've said that multiple JJ's times. JJ's bad. Mikey's bad. Chris safety. Jenkins is overrated. Um, Bro, oh, I love Chris Jenkins. Now yeah, you're just Roman Wilson you're should go in the seventh bro. round. I mean, what are we I doing The only missed player that I've given pushback on, I think, is JJ. Zach Zinner is a scrub. I mean, these boys – you know, I mean, you know, I Zach Zinner. Well, let's let's be real here. Let's be real Fucking about Lucas, who is a resident Ohio State fan. He loves Chris Jenkins. Loves AJ him. McCarthy. He, he loved Chris Jenkins the day he saw him chase someone down. Like, when you, you remember when that play Chris Jenkins was running like 40? You're like, I like this guy. I remember that day. You're like, this guy's a dog. I want, I want this guy. You love yeah, yeah. you said Mikey Sanders was a first round pick. You like, and even though we, you say that you like Mikey, it's just the fact of 29, which I understand, but here's my rebuttal, my rebuttal to that. And I learned this, like, remember, remember Emmanuel Forbes, second round pick, second round pick, guy, guy goes at 18, 17. It's like, who knows guys? Like Mikey might even go in the first round, honestly, like these PFF numbers and everything might not even, who knows, you know, I mean, like, look I, at last year's draft. We really draft. don't know. We really don't know. Will Jameer Levis Gibbs. was projected top yeah. five and went in like well, I don't even know what round he ended up going in. Third. He dropped so third round and he was projected a top five. I literally I took right. a bet for him to go top five and it was like minus one twenty. It wasn't even <laughs> like it was like a, a that's a crazy. It was minus one twenty, which is basically <laughs> even. And he went in third in the third round. So like anything can happen when it comes to the draft. Mikey could end up going in the top. Dude, I saw a report today. Jackson's Powers Johnson that the media and, and people that talk about mock, or talk about the draft are higher on Jackson's powers, Johnson than actual NFL teams and executives. And I saw, I think it was ML football that put it out and, and said as well as that Jackson powers, Johnson could be a guy that drops in this draft and goes in the second round. And I was shocked to see that. Cause that's been a guy that's been so high. I've seen him on mock drafts throughout the summer. That's all the way up to 18, 20, 15. I've seen him go so high. Um, so, yeah, maybe he falls to the lines at 29, but I, I saw that today and I was shocked. Bring him home. So anything can home. happen. Yeah, if if that's a um, – sorry about that, Lucas, my bad. Um, <laughs> if, if you uh, – yeah, that's on me, that's on me. Uh, if Jackson Bowers Johnson is there – Bring him home. Bring him home. Bring him home. Again, dude, just seeing the reports, though, it's saying the media and people that talk about it, us – Hype him up over than what he actually is, so that scares me a little bit. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it, it, it I, makes I me a little why. nervous. I, I I wonder why. Uh, you know, did they say specifically why? No, no, it, no, it didn't. It, it was just I wonder ML why. Like, out, they didn't have, and I do trust them a little bit because I've I've spoken with ML football and they do have like actual connections. So I, I do feel like I trusted it a little bit. I guess I would have to ask. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna well, ask that fellas. One. It is that time. We're going to get to it. It's about 9 o'clock here. Our full first round mock draft, 2.0. We did oh, our shit. last one last Friday. I had one. Boone had two. Lucas had three. Mike had four. We're going to kind of do the opposite. So Mike's going to pick one. Lucas will pick two. Uh, Boone will pick three, and I'll pick last. So that means Mike will have the Lions pick, I think, right? Yeah, because I had the yeah. Lions pick last time. Um, so we're going to do it. We're going to do it live. We got the NFL draft chime and everything. Like we're, we're locked in fellas. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So, excited, yeah, as, you know, the annual to, to start us off here, you hear it. You brother. I can't wait. I cannot wait brother. for the end of the month because <clears throat> it's going to get real. We're going to do this. People, feel free to agree, disagree, make fun of us, call us idiots. Do whatever you like because this is what we like to do uh, before the draft and watch. We'll all be wrong anyway, so we can't wait for that. Um, Gentry, you look at – Tell were on me the why clock. JJ's going one. What's on your mind, my boy? No, you J- 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 JJ is not going no, number one. I'm, I'm not going to do that for the stream and for hey, the sake real of quick, this mock draft. Real quick, every time you select somebody, you got to say mm-hmm. blank team. We'll select so I can take, I could chime up the, get the chime done. All right. I with get the, the chime in. You know, we got to, we got to be efficient. Pick. All right. With All the right, first overall go. pick. Well, you, pick you pick number one. With the first overall pick, the Chicago Bears select Caleb Williams. 
Oh, that's weird. All right, we'll just take him. <laughs> what the fuck? Bust. That man's a bust. Boo. <laughs> I know. I really didn't want, want the yeah, first take. Pick. I didn't case. want to take him. I'm not hey, going to waste much time, boys, so we can get into the nitty and gritty of this draft. Booner, I know I know you don't want to see this man go here. You'd rather see him go number one. But with the second pick in the NFL draft, the Washington Commanders and Dan Quinn, it's like Jaden Daniels, quarterback. Okay, all right. So he's, he's going, we're going, we're, we're going Jane Daniels. I got to go find him because PFF, again, disrespects him. <laughs> yeah, I'm at 21. Nate Wiggins right above him. Jesus Christ. Nate Wiggins above Kool-Aid. Disgusting. All right, I, I was I was slacking on the chime. I'll be better. Uh, what, <laughs> I, was, I, I will be better. <laughs> hey, what? Job, so, I want to talk about my three. pick real quick. Just about a ten second go off here, real quick. Um, go I'm ahead. almost. I've been uh, the, since we've done this last. I know I went at Lucas a little bit about the the Patriots not taking a quarterback. I think there's a chance uh, if I we could trade. I think there's a chance, and I'm starting to see rumors of the the Patriots trading out. Not staying and taking Marvin and Har- Marvin Harrison, but actually well, trading. Out. You know what? You want to do trades? No, 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 no. no we're not doing trades. No, because I already, I've already done my. I, I love your ideas, but no, we're not doing that. Okay. Um, so I, I think there's rumors <laughs> of them trading out. If they do stay, this is what they'll do with the third overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. The New England Patriots select Drake May, quarterback out of North Carolina. Oh, okay, Drake May. If they stay third. number three, that is what yep. they do. All right, Drake May. <laughs> Uh, is off the board. So three quarterbacks, Caleb Williams, Jane Daniels, Drake May. So I, I sit at four. I'm the Shock Cardinals. World, brother. I, I, I had this take a couple days ago that the Cardinals would be absolute idiots if they if they didn't take somebody that's just right there, right there for the taking. Do it. So with that being said, fourth overall pick in the NFL draft. Cardinal select Brock Bauer. No, I'm just kidding. We're going <laughs> oh, I was like, whoa, dude. What are you Marvin doing? Harrison and Junior. <laughs> Maserati oh, Miles with really the fourth pick. All right. Brock and then Bauer. that puts Gentry back up at all five right. with the Chargers. Despite the smoke screen and all that talk about the offensive line earlier on in the week, the San, the San Diego Chargers, the Los Angeles Chargers select wide receiver Malik Neighbors out of LSU. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's scary. <laughs> That's yeah, that's wow. Okay. That's scary. Here we go, boys. Now we're now that's we're scary. finally Jim believes in good wideouts. Love it. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll get to the, we'll get to the, number six, Lucas. What this is think? interesting, boys. This is interesting. This is a spot you could go a couple of ways here, but I think I'm gonna have to bite the bullet. <laughs> the number six pick <laughs> in the 2024 NFL Draft. God. Oh. The New York Don't Giants select. JJ McCarthy, quarterback, <laughs> Michigan. Yeah. Oh wow! There you go. JJ goes to the Giants. I thought there you were saying go. bite the bullet and just go a lineman and go in Joe All. I was like, oh my gosh, oh wow, <laughs> no, Joe All. You know, you know, I don't want to pick JJ. You know, I don't. All want right, to do that. I'm gonna do All this. All right, now. Boone, you're the Titans at seven. This one's a kind of an interesting one. What no, are you this thinking? is an e- easy one. Okay, easy. What do you think? There's a guy in There's a guy in in Tennessee right now that I built my reputation around. His name is Will Levis, quarterback, that everyone in the world <laughs> doubted besides a, na- a kid named uh, Booner who was fresh on the air last year. And put in, guess what? He's a good football player. They're putting everything behind Will Levis with the number seven old, seventh overall pick in the NFL draft, the Tennessee Titans select tackle Joe Alt out of Notre Dame. Oh, Pair him up. Put him on the offensive line with Peter Skaronsky. Give that man Will Levis protection to throw to DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley. He, he's that. Oh my gosh, that's a team. That they're they're building the team over there. They're building the team Honestly, over there. I'll tell you that. And I mean this in the most like this isn't an insult to anybody, but like this draft, we're cooking. Like I think this is like a good. You know, is like, we're on a good pace right now. No, keep it like, up here, boys. Like, you know, Drake May at like 15, whatever we had last week. <laughs> I like that. Right? Drake yeah, he May fell. He went to the, the 10. 10. All right. So around. I have the eighth pick. I pick for the Atlanta Falcons. Okay. This one is another. I've been, you guys have been nice to me. I've been getting some layups here. That's an easy ass pick for me with the eighth pick in the 2024 NFL draft. Oh, wow. The Falcons are taking Dallas Turner. Are you shitting me? Yep. Give me Dallas Turner. He's on the board. To me, the best defensive player in the draft. So I'm going to go ahead and take my man, take him to Atlanta. There you go. 
He is there. Okay, we restart. Now it's pick nine. The Bears are back on the board. Gentry's up. Mr. Ryan Poles. What are you what are you thinking? What are you thinking? With the ninth pick, the Chicago Bears will select Johnny Newton. Johnny Newton. I think Jeff did this last week, too. <laughs> He's going Whoa. Johnny. Johnny Newton. Yeah. I hey. I actually no, to be fair, uh to Mike here, I and the reason why I took him. I'm starting to like try and process the Bears going defense alignment because like I just think they need one either edge or defensive like a defensive tackle like a Jerzon yeah. Newton who can get yeah. pressure. That I would was make hoping he passed oh. on Dallas Turner, but I knew that wasn't going to happen. So that was my back to back. And that with would... the way the wide receiver room stands right now, I think I mean not like a Roma Dunze wouldn't help them tremendously, but they have some good wide receivers as is. So helping out the defensive line, I feel like yeah. would be a step forward. Sure. Good pick, good pick. I'm not just saying that because I did it. Good pick. There you go, Lucas. Honestly, I didn't even know you did it, to be honest. No, hey. Give me a scroll down Great real quick. Mind. Take a like. Give me a scroll right. down real quick. Scroll down? I got yeah, you. Just a little I bit. You. I just want to okay. look at the board a little bit more. Okay. Okay. You got, for shot. you got some tackles here. You got some corners. You got some edges. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to get Black a little powers. different with this one, but it's hard not to. I think with Aaron Rodgers, I think they have one year to go and chase it as legitimate contenders. They had Mike Williams. Their defense is set. Offensive line could be addressed, yes, but when you got a guy like the oh. Georgia Bulldog tight end and Brock Bowers for the 10th overall pick, the New York Jets, get Aaron Rodgers, the best friend of the tight end position, Brock Bowers. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good pick, too. They Hey, shout out T-Conk. He, he's solid up there, but they, they get Brock Bowers. Very fine tight end. Very fine. Very fine. I have a plan, boys. We got Boondog up with the Vikings. I have a plan. Can you scroll a little bit here? Yep. Give me a little scroll. Some players available. <clears throat> okay. Stop. All right. I'm going to throw us off a little bit here, boys, with the 11th overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft. The Minnesota Vikings select Cooper DeGene out of Iowa. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, hey, okay. That fucking okay. crack pipe is hot. It hey, is hey, a hot hey, crack pipe. Hey, Her- Her- Harrison, like Harrison. Smith. I might have picked the wrong corner there, boys. I might have. Sh- I should have gone Terry on Arnold. That might be on me. Yeah, you picked that the might- safety there, Boone. <laughs> what? It's okay. It's okay. Pick the safety. That might be on me one. a little bit. I, I just want to like reading up on the Vikings today because I read up on all the teams that we're doing. They do need they do need some some defense, um, and they're trying to rebuild that defense up a little bit. And and again, the the corner in that safety position and Cooper DeGene's a guy that can go in there and move a little bit. He could he could play it, and they they're gonna need they're gonna need they have two first round picks. If they don't trade, they're gonna go defense, and they're probably gonna go secondary in my opinion with one of these first round picks. I probably could have gone Terry on Arnold. I don't know who they're going to go. Cooper DeGene, that might be a little early for him, but we'll stick with it. Let him learn it. Ryan Harrison Smith 2.0. You went and got your guy, Booner. That's all. Can't hate you got it. your Can't guy, Boone. You got your guy, Boone. All right. Now I'm about to get my guy. <laughs> I'm like Skip Bayless. It's my turn. Oh, well, I picked 12, Sean Payton. This isn't this isn't what I this isn't necessarily something I stamp, but it, I can make sense of it. I can make sense of it because the Broncos don't have a second round pick. So if they don't address that QB position, oh, who are you going? They're going to have to wait, and no one will be there. So with the twelfth pick in the twenty twenty four NFL draft, I know, guys. Just go to QB. You'd be scrolling the, the, forever. I, I'm, yeah. All I'm saying, all I'm saying is, <laughs> he's still scrolling. He's still <laughs> scrolling. <laughs> he's not even on here. Well, I got to filter him now. Okay, oh, the Broncos are chance. taking Bo Nix, quarterback out of Oregon. That's what's. I promise you. That's Oof. book that. Book Drew Brees 2.0. Oh. That's what I was told <laughs> by um, Colin. I actually did Colin say that. I don't even know if Colin Carr. Everyone's saying it. Dude. That's. <laughs> That's the. T- I think he's the type of quarterback that Sean Payton would prefer. We'll see if he works out or not. But they're taking a quarterback. I know that. But there now you've got Gentry with the 13th pick for the Raiders. What do you think of Gentry? So I originally planned this guy was going to be gone, but at pick 13, the Raiders select Quinion Mitchell out of Toledo. Dog. 
Dog. Dog. Yeah, I really messed up that corner pick there, boys, with the, with the Vikings. <laughs> you're, you're, you're good, Boone. You're good. It's bad. Hey, well, the Saints, it's an interesting pick because with Derek Carr, they're kind of stuck in like the next two to three years, I think, of just mediocrity at the best, especially when you look at the Falcons and Kirk Cousins. So they're going to need somebody that can just project them. I think they got to do best player available. And looking at this board right now, I don't think it's hard to see who that is. They just lost Michael Thomas to free agency with the 14th pick. New Orleans Saints, like Rome Adunze, wide receiver. Dirty, hey. Him that's and Chris Olave for the future, boys. Oh that'd be nasty. Right. Yeah, that's a hell that's of a right. pick. The, the Saints scary. fans are jumping all around. Yeah, he's a – you see that win, that uh, route chart that Rome had for the season in like his win, his catches versus targets? Every route in his route tree was like a 70-plus percent catch rate. Like he can run any route. And it reminds me of Garrett Wilson. Like yeah. just everything about him just reminds me of Garrett. A little bit bigger, obviously, but I think yeah. Garrett Wilson has better hands. But I mean, Roma Dunes has great hands. I think that's his perfect pro comp. So that puts Booner yep. with the fifth pick. The can Colts. you give me a quick scroll here, uh, Juicy J? I'll give you a quick. I got you. I, got I, you. I see it. Um, I just want to make sure the person was still on the board. I've seen probably a million dra- mock drafts the last couple months, and it seems there's one position group right now that the, the Indianapolis Colts need to focus on. Um, and with that, the 15th pick in the 2024 NFL draft, the Indianapolis Colts select cornerback Terion Arnold out of Alabama. There you go. Bro. Great pick. There you go. Made up for the corners. There you Thank go. You, it all Thank evened you, out. It all evened out. Yeah. Well, that- First corner off the board. Cooper, Cooper G is still <laughs> absolutely wild. I know we're going to post this and people are going to be like, who did that? That's going to be the only thing that stands out. Fuck this this pick to me is very, very interesting mm-hmm. because the Seahawks need a couple things. They could upgrade at center. They could get an edge. Yeah, a lot to here. He's a risk, but still it's intriguing. If I'm the Seahawks... I know exactly what I'm doing. With the 16th pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks with new defensive head coach, Mike McDonald. They're taking Lao to Lao to at 16. Ooh, that's actually, fair. I think that's no, I take that back. We're taking what? Jerry no. first. No, you, you already gave him the, the, the paper the to the commissioner. You I didn't know he was available. I'm taking Jared verse because there you go. You, you get you, you get it. You get a good hey. edge. To be fair, oh. last time I did that at 16 too, and Jared Verse was above him on the list, and I still went lot too. So I thought I was going to give you shit if you picked him. Yeah, so I, 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 hey, I kind of finessed the people there, but I didn't. To be fair, I didn't know. I thought for some reason Verse wasn't on my mind, but he is to me the best uh, besides Dallas mm-hmm. Turner, the best <gasps> edge. Lot is on your mind, um, but Lot too. He's got just the injury concerns, man. That's what I'm worried about. But there you go, Gentry. You're back up. Jags are up. What are you thinking? So I was going to go edge here, but I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to look for a long-term investment in protecting my quarterback. So I'm going to pick JPJ. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Jackson Powers Johnson, who can fill the need of both guard and center if they needed it. I'm trying to protect Trevor Lawrence for the future. Mm. Okay. I like that. I like that, John. Get his bag. Picking for Joe Burrow. That's your guy. This this one's tough. Because they they do need offensive line help, but I look at this draft, and at this point in the draft, I think there's a player that's just glaring, like, take me. Like, how did I fall to pick 18 right here? They Mm -hmm. just lost DJ Reed, we're all aware of that, with the 19th pick. Oh, no, no, don't do it. 18th pick in the 2024 NFL draft. Cincinnati Bengals, like Byron Murphy. Oh, oh dude, the, the DJ Reader replacement. Mm-hmm. Okay. They they already do have a don't they already do have a replacement though, don't they? Didn't they sign they, someone? Who did they uh from? Yeah, the uh, sh- is it? Sh- um, I could be wrong here. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm wrong. Yeah, but it, like either way, like I think they. I'm they just mad use- because I had the only notes I had in here was uh for the Rams was just get by. Oh, Murphy Sheldon and- Rankins, but he's he isn't he a little? He's he's not he's like, like 33, 34 years old. But Byron Murphy, you look at him, he's a, he's a defensive tackle. Like, Sheldon Rankins is going to be a guy that they use probably, like, on situational rundowns. You look at Byron Murphy, he's a guy that's going to be playing every every down through the through the course of his career. I think he's a three-down defensive tackle. 
and you look around that division, the quarterbacks that are in the division, the offense there in the division, you got to make that pocket uncomfortable, especially if you're losing DJ Reader. No question. Well, that leaves the 19th pick in Booner's hands. Booner, you're the Rams. What do you think? Yeah, I think this is actually uh, pretty easy here. Can you just give me a quick scroll here? Um, just want to make sure. A lot of tackles, man. I See, you do these mocks, and you're like, wait, how are these guys here? Like Very deep yeah. tackles. There's, there's going to be more tackles taken by now. It's yeah. a very deep tackle oh, class. I'm going to go I, I, tackles. Sorry, I do go. have my pick, though, and, and I do think there's a, a pretty big need, at least on my end with the Rams. Yeah, you probably could go offensive lineman and keep building that offensive line. Um, but I, I think on the other side of the ball, that defensive line, it's building from the out, inside out there. I do think that they need it. They need to start adding to this defensive line. They do have some dudes, actually. I mean, we saw them in the chan- or in, in, in the playoffs last year, but I'm going to go this. With the 19th pick of the 2024 NFL draft, Los Angeles Rams select. Latu, Latu, Latu. There you go, dog. He stays in in Cali. And that leaves me with the Steelers, which, boys, this is where the run happens Mm -hmm. on tackles, in my opinion, because that puts the Steelers in a place where, hey, got to take a tackle. And to me, the best available tackle. It's a tough one because I like Fashanu a lot, but Fuaga is proven to be a dog. Yep. In, in pass pro, which they need. And Fashanu, man, he just he, he needs some development, but I don't, you know, screw development. We need we, we got Russ, we we got uh, Justin Fields. We're we're trying to win now in a tough division. Give me Talis Fuaga out of Oregon State. Tackle. There you go. That's that's a guy that you're gonna start day one and you're not gonna have to worry about it, at least in pass protection. He's a massive human being. I think. Even with the athletic defensive ends, he has good mobility to go with the size. I think he's going to be a stud in this league. Going to be a multiple-time Pro Bowl or potentially All-Pro type. And of he played a lot of games at right tackle. They got Broderick at left, so yeah. he fits you know a little better. But yeah, there you go, Fu- Fuaga at, at twenty. Now that puts Gentry. You're the Dolphins. What do you, what do you All think? All right, I had the same mindset as you. Kind of address the offensive line. Hopefully, Tua doesn't get killed again. So I will take uh, the Miami Dolphins. Will select Troy Fontana. I can't ever, ever say his name. So yeah, hey, hey, you just would we'll say TF. There you go. Four, eight, <laughs> TF. Yeah. Out of yeah, it's like TF out of Washington. And there you go. Uh, Troy goes to the Miami Dolphins at twenty-one. That puts Lucas with the Eagles, and he's going to try and convince us why Nate Wiggins makes sense. Yeah, not a fucking chance. <laughs> not a chance. I'm not saying anything. Give me a little scroll real quick, though. Give me a little All scroll. Right, I'll, give you a little, I'll give you a little scroll mm-hmm. here. Yeah, there, there, there are some players here, some mm-hmm. guys here. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. Hey, I'm going to jump the gun here, but this will go into a conversation that we kind of just had. Wow. You're looking at first-round talent, this guy's it. We just had the conversation. I mean, wow. Lee Blake and Marcus Epps, you're really going to roll into them with your secondary? And I know you got C.J. Gardner-Johnson, but the Eagles – they need, they need secondary help, and I'm not taking Nate Wiggins. So the 22nd pick in the NFL oh. draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Mikey Sanders still. Oh! Safety slash cornerback. 22? Michigan. Wow. I'm going to say this, Lucas. I, I, we're going to get absolutely cooked because I took Cooper DeGene so early, and we took Mikey at 22. <laughs> we're going to yeah, get I mean, absolutely cooked. He, he could go to the Cowboys or uh, the Packers, and they're in the same range. Ooh. This is interesting. Uh, but I'm not taking wow. Nate Wiggins, man. I'm sorry. I'm not. I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. Cool. Well, that puts Booter. Booter picks the Vikings again. <laughs> you already yep, said and, and What do you I think? noticed I did that, so I made a decision here. I already know my decision with the Vikings. We we were hope we were hoping this guy fell to us after I took um, Cooper DeGene at whatever was it was eleven or twelve um, with the number twenty three overall pick in the twenty twenty four NFL draft. The Minnesota Vikings select quarterback Michael Penix out of Washington. Mm. Great pick! Look at that. I like that Boone. That's value, Boone. That's va- yeah. That's, that's I, I saw reports today, yeah. fellas. Um, that Michael Penix is almost leading up to becoming a first round pick. I know we know what corner or quarterbacks, what happens, um, what happens with quarterbacks. A lot of them fall and this and that, and they're always moving. You never know. Uh, but they're like after his pro day and Michael Penix is starting to come out to be a dude and people, he might be a first round pick this year. Um, if the Vikings don't trade and a team sitting in the twenties that needs a quarterback or a team can trade back and get Michael Penix, I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked. Now, I, I, 
if we're if we're talking about what usually happens with quarterbacks, they, so he probably goes into like the second round. Uh, but Vikings need someone. Michael Penix is on the board. Well, hey, the Cowboys pick at twenty four. They just had their left tackle leave, uh, and Tyron uh, Tyron Smith, who's injury riddled. So with that being said, the Dallas Cowboys, they like shiny toys. They like thing, they like guys that got a lot of upside. And they're taking Fushanu, the tackle out of Penn State. Great spot for him. They're, he's going to the Cowboys. They take another tackle to solidify that offensive line. So that's that's my process on it. And that puts Michael back on the board at 25 for the Packers. What are you thinking? All right. The Green Bay Packers with the 25th pick. They're going to shit on some Lions fans day. They select Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama. Jeff doesn't like that one. Jeff doesn't like that one. It's hurt that man's heart. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, well, it's adversity. (laughs) (laughs) That puts a Lucas Tampa Bucks. What do you think? There's a player that I'm thinking here, but I know I'm going to get cooked if I take him. But I might just say fuck it and take him regardless. Give me a little scroll. All right. Let me see. Looking at their needs. (sighs) Interesting spot. (laughs) Oh, this is fucking. There's a couple dudes on this board, man. Because there's in every draft, there's a couple guys that go first round. You're like, who, who the fuck? Who the? Who, I'm trying to think of the guard that the the Cowboys took last year. I know who you're uh, thinking right now, actually. Tyler I'm Smith, right and he was a stud. But all right, I'm I'm just gonna stick to my guns and say I could see this happening with the 26 pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive-minded head coach Todd Bowles takes Peyton Wilson, linebacker out of North Carolina State, losing Devin Great. White. He's and you know they like to stop the run. I, they lost Shaq Barrett as well. I think that's how they improved the run game, and then he's good in the pass game as well. Well, that a gritty lunch pail kind of guy. Interesting. <laughs> First one in, last one out. You know, type of guy you'd like your daughter to date. Peyton Wilson. David getting old. <laughs> yep. He. Um. It's just the. It's just you know what, Peyton Wilson. There you go. Twenty seven. Boone. Yep. Cardinals. Arizona. Hey, I, I took Marv with them. What are you thinking? Arizona Cardinals, they already got their wide receiver. I think you you um they're gonna go the route here. Uh, you need to protect the quarterback at all costs. I'm gonna go with the 27th overall pick of the 2024 NFL draft. The Cardinals select Graham. Wait, can you scroll down and see there still? Graham Barton. Do you remember last week that happened? Graham, Graham Barton out of Duke. That Barton. happened last week where he went early from Gentry, and so I think wow. Lucas drafted him later, and they were like, <laughs> yeah. oh, he was off the board. You know I didn't see him on the board yeah, for a second. I panicked. Then I'll grand Barton be quicker than that. Well, you know what? <laughs> this is a um, this Jeff, is an interesting you're... spot here. Is your boy still there, Jeff? I'm. I don't think he's been picked yet. Yeah, I, he's I got. There. I got somebody here. Don't around. don't feed into his head. Just, don't feed into his head, Clotty. Because I want someone to get to twenty nine here. I'm just thinking here. They need because like this need boy. Is... Just kidding. I don't need to think. This one is a layup. Okay, that's gonna say. Brian Diamond, dude. Oh, man, yeah. wanted him to fall to the Lions. Why couldn't you just let him fall to the Lions? You get a winter coat. Come play with Josh Allen. Get your ass oh, over here, Brian. Fuck. Yeah, there you go. Makes sense. He should have been gone like 10 picks ago, boys. Yeah, God he damn it. earlier. But hey, you oh. know what? Dog. We got him. Dog. There you go. That puts Mike on the board for the Lions at 29. Mike, don't fuck this up. Don't fuck, fuck this up. man. Fuck. Yeah, Jeff, why'd you do don't, that? Don't why'd you, you just one you time let Ryan come out? You knew what you were doing. You know I what you let him fall once. I don't stole. you even fucking think about it either, Gentry. Don't you even think about it. Ugh. Trade back, <laughs> dude. I, I will leave this. I will leave this stream if you do it. <laughs> my Can my my two you? do not drafts are sitting there. No, I will go the safe route here with the player we've already interviewed. Edge out of Missouri, Darius Robinson. D Rob, thank you. Thank God, getting the, thank the do it all guy. There you go. You get D Rob. I wanted Brian Thomas. Fuck you, Jeff. Hey, yeah, watch you. Uh, <laughs> What are we doing? Yeah, we got a dog. Alrighty, boys. 
that Baltimore Ravens just so. decided to just absolutely whack us around week six, I believe it was pause, but they, they're, they're a pretty solid team. They have a couple of holes that they could fill, but they need to get Lamar Jackson more help. Um, when you look at the receivers left, I think there's one that really sticks out for what they need on the outside. So with the 30th pick in the 2024 NFL draft, the Baltimore Ravens selected Donnie Mitchell, wide wow. receiver, University of Texas. Dog. How many I like him. I, say, I think they already they, got they, enough guys in the slot. They got they got Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman on the outside. Obviously, he's fallen off, and they brought in Devin Duvernay. So they got enough. They they got enough oh, in the slot. This is a layup. Um, I'm looking my chops right now at 32. Someone's falling right in my right into my. Hey, come here. Um. Well, San Francisco 49ers need to just keep both boosting up this offensive line uh, with the 31st overall pick with the NFL draft. The San Francisco 49ers select J.C. Latham, tackle out of Alabama. It falls right to them. Well, boys, that puts me in an interesting position. I'm 32, right? I got the fifth-year option. And we just lost Legereus Sneed. I hope they do this. Take him. Take him. We got the <laughs> best D.C. in the league. And he Man. can help develop certain corners. And I think this guy right here, Mr. Nate Wiggins. This, he almost fell out. He almost he, he almost fell out how he should. He will be developed into our future CB1. Unless he, <laughs> do, uh, do you know what's going to happen, uh, too? I, I can feel this draft, and I know it exactly. What's good. Lucas knows what I'm about to say here. Is Nate Wiggins is going to end up being like the best corner in this draft. I just like out of nowhere. I'd put it's my – I, I would put – my future don't son or daughter's don't life. Don't do it. No, don't do I, it. You give me Terry on oh, Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, and I'm 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 sleeping safe at night. No, Nate Wiggins will be the best. No. Nice I almost took Kamari Lasseter, but I just think it's As just man, Wiggins in the free. He, you gotta take him, man. No, you, yeah. don't. you don't. <laughs> you don't. You don't. You, you really don't. don't. There's a full draft of NFL players there that you don't have to. Doesn't fit my narrative. So no. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at uh, look what we did, fellas. I mean, I, I, you know what? I, you know, I like this. The same bad. I, you know what? I thought we did. A, I thought you know what, guys? I thought we got in the lab and we got better from last week. I think that's what we did. Yeah, I, you know, I'm just gonna throw my hand up here for criticizing picks real quick. I just want to criticize myself so no one else can. I'm gonna hold myself accountable. I'm gonna be like a, a Detroit Lion type player. Number 11, Cooper DeGene probably wasn't the right pick. I probably should have gone Terry on Arnold, or I probably should have gone Quinion Mitchell. I don't think there's any chance Cooper DeGene goes over Quinion Mitchell and Terry on Arnold. Um, so before anyone says anything, that's on me. Hand up. Wait on yourself think, accountable, bro. I think besides that, this was a great draft from the fellas. Yeah, I just think um, the only – I mean, this is all of us, too. I think there's got to be we, – we next time we got to make sure we get more tackles going in that in the teens. There's like there's, yeah. no, there's no way that like Fashan or not Fashanu, but like Fuaga, he's he's arguably a top fifteen pick. So where where would you kind of where would we switch that at then? Because I'm interested then. I want to scroll see down a little bit. I would probably if we were to redo it, and obviously it's hard to do, but like I would give the Raiders Fuaga for sure. Um, I could definitely see looking at it. I don't know. I could also see the Vikings there. If like if there's no quarterback, they take a tackle because they got Brian O'Neill, but that's pretty much it on their offensive line. But there's Darisol. a couple. They got Darius. Darius Hall too. Yeah, yeah, very, very good point. That's very true. I don't know. Yeah. And there's also gonna be teams that would trade up too, which we got to take into account. Like I think if you're if you're looking at the team that did get tackles, I could see him moving up as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the tackle things. It, it's weird. Like they could go as high as like you said, Lucas. They can go to the Raiders. The Jets could take a tackle. The the Bears, I think, if they don't go defensive lineman, they could take another tackle. Yeah, um, and, sure that, it's just it's weird. It's a weird. Um, I think the Chargers might take a tackle. Like they might take Joe Alt. Yeah, and the Saints yeah. too. But with Roma Dunze sitting there, I don't think there's a way you could pass up on him. Yeah, you know, what, fellas. So Lucas, this was fun. What? You said you would walk out if the Lions picked Mike at 29, but you picked him. No, no, no. That, I'm saying I would not want I'm saying when we go back to talking <laughs> oh, about picks we'd walk out on, we, we said if we, they took a safety, that'd be something we walk. I wouldn't walk oh, out okay, on. Okay, okay. I'd fair. bite the bullet, but I just I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad, like what the fuck are we doing? But I would definitely be like 
that's a that's a fair point in my opinion where you can critique Brad Holmes. Like, all right, what are you? I would come back to the draft like recap with questions for sure more so than yeah, Mikey in the, at twenty nine. We we got our third safety. Like, no, I'm cool. I'm cool. Give me, give me, give me Xavier Leggett. Mikey at twenty nine. Xavier Leggett. Give me wide Xavier receiver Leggett. three at twenty nine. Listen, the, the the offense was top five. You give Xavier Leggett, this offense arguably goes top three at the floor, in my opinion. You're 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 the yak that you're gonna get, the amount of broken tackles that you're gonna get out of them compared to a guy that you're putting at a spot where you look at the mm-hmm. we talk about all the time the the depth drop off, in my opinion, is more drastic a receiver than safety, especially with young talent. All those guys are on rookie contracts. It's a fair point. I don't like it, but <laughs> interesting, inter- uh, interesting, interesting. Very interesting. Fair point, but I disagree. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, here's uh, uh, here's we're gonna get to in a couple minutes. Here we're gonna get to some fan mock drafts. I got a couple here that I, I do want to get through. I got big play Jays here. Um, I'm also gonna show off. I'm gonna make sure I, I get the name correctly. Make sure I, I give some. You guys have some. Send them through. El too. Monstro at John Snow two two nine on Twitter. I also have uh, some other ones that I do want to show here. Make sure I get the name. We're going to do about three to three to five. We'll show off today. We'll, re- we'll react to. We got Jeff Merrill. Ooh, shout uh, out Jeff. Brian Brian Westcott. Also, so there's the kind of four uh, a name. We'll we'll get one more. We'll start us off. I believe this is Big Play J. Big Play, if you're watching, we appreciate you. Shout out Big Play J, man. Yep, we're going to react to your mock draft, fellas. So here we go. There's his mock. All right. It's a lot going on here. But mm, we got Jerzon Newton at 29. Max Melton at 61. Jonah Ellis at 81. Kyrie Jackson, 118, 164. Uh, Matt Gone Cut. Gone Cavs. The man has no calves. Gone yeah. calves. No, like, it's kind of a little small. I'm trying to read. Marcus Rosamy Jackson. Holy shit. Uh, I've heard of him. Delmer Glaze. Um, and and that's, a name. that's a Somehow. name for sure. Come on, come on, Jeff. Before we go farther. Go farther. Sure. Is Big Play J trolling with us? Are these? No, we these are all funny names. No, yeah. yeah. These are legit guys. <laughs> Blaze, we got Evan Williams Rose. safety, and then we got Brennan Jackson, Jackson edge. So he took, yeah, I mean, two edges, uh, two corners, a tackle. Deep. I mean, I don't. I, maybe it, I would if I had a critique for you. Not that I don't even like it, because honestly, I think he did a pretty good job. Like Jerzon will could be a damn good player. Max Melton's going to play. Joan mm-hmm. Ellis, Kyrie Jackson. Yeah, I like the little. Thing. It just might be too many guys. Is that kind of? I don't know if you guys. So it's a lot of draft that. picks because you, you saw the picks, trades but... there. Um, so he made a lot of trades. So a lot of draft picks. The one thing I will say about this draft is, obviously, you didn't get a wide receiver until one ninety six. So oh, pretty shit, there's late. more. Oh, is <laughs> oh there? wait, there's more. Yeah, Julian Pearl. <laughs> what is who is that? Who's that from what exactly? What, I mean can't, yeah, can't yeah. see a position or oh, there we go. Offensive tackle. Okay. Yeah, it's probably Julian. too many. Like multiple off of three offense alignment is at least what I could see. Can you zoom out again, Jeff, or go up? Yep. Um, so like the thing I like about this, to be honest, is and I don't know how mad I would be at it. I think I want a wide receiver because Josh Reynolds is gone, but just like the Durzan New and Max Melton, Jonah Ellis, like just addressing the defense, you know that the defense was so bad. Like, not like terrible last year but that was like your you would be a lot better if that defense was top 15 that would have changed the whole season and probably outcome of the season um so i like addressing the defense just off the bat just saying let's get some of the best players on the board when it comes to the defense i, I don't hate that that approach there you got two guys on the defensive line and you added another corner, max melton who's going to be very good who could potentially be as high as a second like late first second round pick so i don't I don't hate it. I would rather, like, at 118, I would go wide receiver there instead of going another corner if I was going to go defense, defense, defense. What do you guys think? Do you guys I don't think? hate it. Uh, I think Jerzon Newton isn't a need by any means, I think, after signing DJ Reader. But if you get him at 29, DPA. I mean, that, that, mm-hmm. yeah, that's hands down the best player available. Max Bellin in the second round, I like. Jonah Ellis, mm-hmm. but to Booner's point, I'd like to see wide receiver, but it's a solid draft. Probably give it a C plus, B minus. I don't think there's a lot that jumps out at you, 
out of the Jerzon Newton pick, but it's solid for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I would say around a B, B minus. Yeah, I don't I don't think he did a, a bad job at all. I just it, it just the ability, the amount of picks, maybe I would critique. But mm-hmm. yeah, he, and Jerzon Newton, he kind of fits what Brad is, like bet, bet BPA if he's actually there, then yeah, like I get he won't he might not play this year, but dude, he's just He's just so good. You got to, I mean, you figure it out kind of thing. Uh, but there, there it is for big play. J big play. J we appreciate you, man. Sending your mock to Shout us, uh, letting us kind of review it. We'll get our next one here up on the screen. This comes from, um, I want to make sure I, I get this right. El Monstro. I think it is. So here's his mock. Keon mm. Coleman, Dominic, uh, Pooney, yep. Pooney, Pooney, you Brandon Do- uh, Doorless, Dor- Doorless, Dorius. <laughs> is it really? Oh, was it an is I? It, is that an I? Oh no, it's an L. Yeah, Doorless. Doorless. Yeah, Doorless. Brandon Doorless. Doorless, and then DJ James. CB this is a four rounder. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't hate. To, I mean, I, I yeah. Well, uh, I would like to see who was available at twenty. Coleman in the first round. So like, hey. me too. We're we're locked step there. I'll, I'm gonna go see with this. Yeah, yeah I would have liked to be an of, edge. But. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's not an edge there, that's for sure. And Pooney, I'm after a D. the combine, there's a lot of questions raised with him as far as his athleticism and him potentially falling. So in the second round, that boy better work because that's who you're probably going to use as the Taylor Decker replacement. So I don't know. I don't, I really don't love that this draft that much. It's not yeah. terrible, but it's definitely – I would – I'd be questioning Brad a little bit for sure. I, I didn't even notice line. there was no edge. I'm going to go – I'm going to go D. Because because you have to get an edge in the first three. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna it, go it, it F. Must. I I just I I'm oh, sorry. Jeff? You know, I'm oh, going. No, I'm, I'm gonna go F. Just because I just Jeez. wow. I'm, I just yeah. I think corner. I think corner. You waited too long. No edge in the first three rounds, and I don't like wide receiver in the first round. But that's just me. Probably a good human being. <laughs> probably, a good, <laughs> probably a good dude. <laughs> But hey, it's like saying hey, not to be disrespectful, but yeah. Um, and hey, we appreciate you as a listener, but I'm being honest with you. I'm not gonna, I can't, I can't just blow smoke up your ass here. I don't like the pit, I don't like the draft. Who, who was I'm the draft? Who who was it? El Monstro, I, I believe. Shout out El Monstro. What I want you to do, El Monstro, get back in the lab over the next seven days, six days, come back next <laughs> Sunday, or next Friday. I want to see an even better one. Let's see some improvement here. Mm-hmm. Here we go. That's El all you hate. Do better, come back, come back better, like we did with our mocks, right. You know, always, you, just, you there's always room for lap. improvement. Always room for improvement. I think, uh, I, I, I think this is Jeff Merrill. I, I know if Jeff's in there, uh, Jeff, please correct me. I think this is yours. If it's not, I have yours next. But give me a. This is, I, I believe, this is your first one because he sent me. He sent me three, and the third <laughs> one, he was like, ah, eh, not sure about it. So here's the first one he had, um, and oh, it's a full, it's a full seven rounder. You got Jackson Powers Johnson, Marshawn Nealon. Max Melton, the first three rounds. Luke McCaffrey, round five. A.J. Wow. Barner, round six. Trey Taylor, safety, round six. And Got then, uh, holy shit. Uh, is Zuavia uh, Z- Gadlin. Gadlin. Guard. <laughs> he had to just pick that so you could try to pronounce it, Jeff. Yeah, you know, what, Jeff, I know what you're doing here. No, but in all seriousness, guys, this is a great draft. It That's is. Really freaking amazing draft. I get this one an A. Easily. Yeah. I, I I'd go as well easily. I'm I'm a very question on this Jackson Powers Johnson thing. So that's BPA, correct? Because if he falls there, yeah. What do you do? Who 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 on the offensive line? I know you were like you want depth, but like he's a guy that goes in and starts anywhere. Who do you is it like? Sorry, Graham, you're you're out for the year, and you just signed him to a three year no. deal. So what do you do? Just hey, sorry, JPJ. I know you're one of the best in the draft. You're supposed to be a starter automatically. What do you you're do? Just with- you're just on the sideline for the year. Like, you just made the point genuine, about you just genuine, made the point earlier about Brian Branch. How you yeah, figure that's, out. That's, that was my point with okay. Mikey. So if Jackson Powers Johnson comes in and he's better than Graham, yeah, dude, you win. have literally all like Pro Bowl guys on the front fr- five. Well, I'm not okay. Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. And maybe not. He's. I don't think he'll walk and be better than Graham. But guess what? Who who's your replacement after Kevin Zeiler? After a year. Yeah, I guess it's I guess it's fair. I guess more so it's it's fair because there is like it's inevitable. There's going to be injuries on the offensive line throughout the season. And you get That's, a guy who's a first round. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you. 
you know, I like that. Yeah. Let so, him and, learn and if for Frank a year goes too, down, man, God forbid like Frank goes down. Like he's the linchpin. You got a guy who could play center. Boom. Yeah. So I, I, oh, uh, I love that. this draft guys. I, I, yeah, I, I like I, it. I, I love this draft. This yeah. is a great draft. Yeah. I don't Sean hate it. By any means. I know it's still in the respect. fifth round, but like, I I'm curious, like the Luke McCaffrey pick, I even like that, but like, I wonder what other wide receivers were available at this pick. I mean, he's still great and I wouldn't hate it by any means, but I, I just don't know which wide receivers are dropping that late. Yeah, the D plus grade for that is egregious, in my opinion. Yeah. There's no. It, it's only no because way. of his his he's one eighty one and and he got him at one sixty four. That's the only reason they. Yeah. That's that's how they grade. They they grade based off the player range to where you get him. I don't think it's an actual good grade. I ignore those well, to be course. honest. Well, thanks, Jeff, for the submission. Must be the name, man. Must be the J- Jeff name. You just crush this. So you know yeah. what? I appreciate Jeff you, name. Jeff. I don't know. <laughs> Struggled Great. to start the show, if we're being honest. Yeah. Wait, what? What happened at the, at the beginning of the show? You, I can't remember what it was, but it was like the Jeffs. What's happening with the Jeffs? I can't oh, who? remember what it was now. Yeah, well, I now you know you got me. Uh, damn, now I'm trying to remember. Boom, damn, well, I forgot too. Damn, damn, damn. Hey, well, here's, here's the final one, okay? And mm-hmm. there was a trade up involved. Lucas, all right. I think you're gonna love this draft. This is from Brian Westcott. Uh, Brian, right. if, you're, if you're watching, oh wow, this is what he did. It's different. Wow, ah! oh my god, <laughs> I actually love I love the first three picks. I didn't even the cam, I've fallen in love with Cameron Kitchens over the last week, too, boys. Of course, Cameron you Kitchen oh, fucking hey, he took Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Every, that, everyone, that, that, that was your boy to hell, everybody. Hey. This I mean, there's like it's an A plus on every single one there. Yeah, I'm like what? <laughs> that is actually insane. A plus, A plus, A. Oh my goodness. This might Lucas be unrealistic, to be honest. Oh, here, let me take off the um the lower third here, so you guys can see. Okay. Uh, uh yeah. You, it, well, you could take Terry on Arnold off here. Forget the trade, and then just get Max Mellon in the second or third. And I'd still give this an A. Bro must be a Clemson fan. Last three players taken from Clemson. Very true. Very true. He just brought their whole front seven. He's like, who's the best? Who's the best player on each level? Of the front <laughs> seven? Bring them home. One of them's gonna work. <laughs> what do you what think, uh, Boone? What, what do you think? I just want an edge in the first three rounds, brother. <laughs> I love the A you pluses get Xavier on there. Do keep Xavier Leggett at eighty three. Give me Keyshawn Nealander. Give me someone. Keyshawn. <laughs> I don't care about the safety, man. Take that. Give me a edge, please. I, I don't like again. I know Brad doesn't go needs. I can guarantee you it might be a booner lock of the draft. There's going to be an edge taken in the first three rounds by the Detroit Lions. <laughs> it's an absolute booner lock. You don't send us shout out whoever this is. This is a great draft. I'll give you a B because of the no edge in the first three rounds. When you send us mock drafts, give me an edge in the first three. 249, Xavier Thomas has an A+. Oh, yeah. What are you complaining about? What are you complaining about? Xavier. I don't know. Okay, so Lucas, oh, you're good with Marcus Davenport. Heard it here first. <laughs> if, if, I got, if I got Xavier to get on the offensive side and Terry on Arnold behind him, you're damn right. I you, no, you're, you're, you guys heard it here first. Lucas <laughs> loves um, Mookie Betts and, and Mookie Betts. Yeah, Mookie Betts. Marcus <laughs> Davenport. <laughs> No way. Hey, Mookie Betts been oh, balling out joke, first three games. That was a joke, my bad boys. That was a, I thought it was going to be a well, funny joke. I I think I I think he did a, I think he did a pretty good job. I'm with Boone though, to be honest. I think Edge, you got to go a little higher, Boone. I'm, excuse me, I'm with you. I I, I just know we got a safety. Like, Cameron Kitchens, Kitchens, K- Kitchens. Watch He's your a, tone. Watch hey, your tone. Hey, MPWMU. Watch hold your on. tone. Hold on. Hold on. He's probably he's very he's a fine football player, a very fine safety. Uh, but what I, we, we come on, come on over Why an edge. Why at twenty nine? Oh my gosh. Well, be, okay. Jeez, because, dude. Be, don't do the no, don't do that. Uh, no, I asked you. I asked you. On, <laughs> I hate when you get me clots. Because hold on, I gotta I gotta this is my rebuttal. At least if you take Mikey, you can get a. Okay. At least if you take Mikey, you can get an edge in the second. Okay, is that fair? Well, if you take Cameron Kitchens in the third, you can as well. But he didn't. 
He, he got yeah, well, I know. He, he, he got, he got arguably, though. arguably They're the dog players. of this draft and Xavier Leggett. Uh, it, realistically, for one, Terrion Arnold is not falling to 19. That's not going to happen. So I would expect, like, this draft, I think in reality, I love it. But there's no way this happens. I, I mean, Terrion's not falling to 19. Player. Xavier's not falling to 61. No. I don't know about Kit Kinchins or whatever his name. I don't know about Jeremiah Trotter. But, like, I'm guessing these are all grades A+, plus because none of these players are going to be available at these picks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and J- hey, any fair thoughts fair. on Jeremiah Trotter? I like him, and you guys he, crapped on me when solid. I took him last time. He's solid. What did you take him in last when you took him? I think like the third round, third, fourth. Yeah, it might have been. <laughs> no, no, that's not. No, no, like, I, been I, like I, ninety. I think, I think be like they, the before they traded that pick for Carlton Davis, I took him with that pick. I think. Yeah, I don't. Bro, I don't. I, don't, I would, didn't hate it. But I just think it was it was early on in the draft process too. So we saw a linebacker and we're like, bro, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I know. I was, it was fair to be honest. I, I just like him. He's just like if you if you watch, if you watch his tape, he's dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can, can I can I throw a suggestion out real quick? What's up, Boone? C- a couple minutes until mailbag. Can we just do a quick seven round Lions mock draft for the people? Oh, you want to do it? Just a know. quick one. We don't have to sit here and take a lot of time. I just and I the, this is what the the this is the thing I want to do with you fellas. I just want let's just focus on BPA. Let's not even think about p- position need. I just want to go BPA. Just BPA. Okay. Like this is well, a, we a can one agree that in the first round what, what Nate Wiggins is not one of that. that this I'm is fine. like a training for us. This is a booner training for the boys. I, I want to see where we I want to see this real quick. I want to go this BPA. Like I keep talking. When the HR people come in to the to the yes. office for the day and they got to give all the the wellness tests, make sure everybody's I've my, on I've cue. got my legs right, crossed. Let, I'm ready for this. Check it out. Let's let's see let's, let's see what we got here. Um all right. Let's start it off. About to hit simulate. Are we doing trades or no? No. no, no, let's no. just go straight up here. I want to go straight. Up. I just want to see BPA. If there's no trades, I want to see who's on the board for BPA. Oh, for okay. So Darius went early. Uh, no. Brian Thomas gone. A lot of tackles gone. So we got Kool Aid, JPJ, and Kool. Oh, this is worst case can, scenario. Can, you, can where... you scroll down a little bit more as well? Oh, this is worst case scenario. I don't really care about any of these guys, except let's for scroll, last scroll a bit. Or am I frozen over here? Oh, there we go. You don't want any of those guys, Boone. It's it's all the it's all right, like it's JPJ. Robinson. It's JPJ, JPJ Kool Aid McKinstry, Nate Wiggins. What's the chat? I mean, come on, this is J- a tough one. I don't know if it's Kool Aid or Wiggins. JPJ. Keep Nate uh, Wiggins out of yeah. this conversation. All right, hand oh, up I'll if you want Kool Aid. I'll do a poll. I'll do a poll. Yeah, just do a poll of those three. I'm interested to see what people. I don't. What do you guys? Here, while I'm doing this, tell me what you guys think. Tell me the two. I, I vote Kool Aid. Why? Why over JPJ? What's wrong? Why do you, what, does he suck? Or I mean, I, like, JPJ wouldn't be bad to have reinforcements, like you guys said, and he could possibly start on the offensive line. But I think the ceiling with Kool-Aid McKinstry and the way our secondary has been kind of depleted, I just think that would probably be more valuable to us. Is that BPA the- for you? Yeah. That's the exercise. This exercise is, is strictly BPA. This is We're, we're yeah. in Brad Holmes' mind right now. Give me the hog, Molly. Give but, me the uh, man up front. Like the chat's going JPJ, so we can run that. Yeah, JPJ is the move. JPJ, here, boy. I would go BPA. Yeah, go JPJ. I would. I would actually agree with that. JP, he's just a dog. So yeah, it's gonna, dog. I don't think it's going to be there, but I wouldn't hate either of them. All right, so we keep we we roll. We keep moving here. Um. All right. All right. Next pick, sixty-one. You know, you got Check some receivers. Uh, Oh, so we're what are we we're, we're thinking receiver? No, notice we haven't we haven't taken an edge yet. He just wants to see if the... Xavier Leggett's available. That's all. I know Lucas so well. I don't think I'll, go go look at Edge too. I know Lucas. I know Lucas. I know him too well. I I, I need I need to get a, a break a couple of days here from class because went... I know that man like the back <laughs> of my hand. Xavier Xavier Leggett went. <laughs> Where'd he go? He was still might be on the board. What? I don't think he got drafted. Go to Ricky the first Pierce round. the one before him. Oh, right there, Chargers. Oh, great pick. Oh, Chargers, go. Oh, wow. Great pick. Yeah, 37. Yeah, that is awesome That's great. for them. All right, so Edges, Joan Ellis. Oh, I like Austin Booker, too. Marshawn Nealon. There's a couple guys. Nah, 
Gabriel Murphy, yeah, I, guys. I don't hate Rome Jonah Alice. I think it, I think on the board, Jonah, would you say Jonah might be like the best player left? I think as of right now, but do you guys remember when Russ came on here and he was hyping up Gabriel Murphy? And then yeah. we I watched his film. He's somebody that could be special. I don't think he's the best player available, Booner, but that's a who, name who, that if Brad takes, Lions fans should be excited. Who would you say BPA? Marshawn uh, Nealon or Jonah Jonah Ellis? Um, keep scrolling a little bit. Well, it's hard to tell if we're just staying on edge. Mm. Well, what corners are there? Because, I mean, we pick at 73, and at least one of those edges might be there. Hmm. Max Melton. I think Max Melton would be the best player available. Out of all of these guys. Real. Yeah, I, I think he would be. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with Lucas. All right, let's do it. I think Max Melton. I I'm because I'm mistaken. I like Nealon, but I I, I, I did Max see this. And if you don't take him, he might not be there at 73. Chris so. Jenkins is still there. Yeah, I think he's up there like the probably the top three best players available but if you're gonna they need a corner, let's just say let's they hit need... max melton boys so for time's sake time's sake let's just go yeah. max melton all right, we, all right, right, right. we got we got seven next, rounds next pick need an edge need an edge need an edge, need an edge. No, we're, we're doing bpa edge so we three. got I... murphy or oh i'd like awesome austin gabe booker. murphy and awesome booker bro yeah i almost say let's go austin booker I'm gonna I'm gonna go towards Gabriel Murphy, but I'm not gonna be mad at you boys if we go Austin Booker. Gabriel Murphy's got juice. He's got juice. It's just an injury concern, which you know Brad likes. <laughs> He's intrigued. Jeff, 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 pick one. Oh crap! What's the chat saying? All right, what? Okay, we you know what. Let's just do it. We'll take um, we'll take Murphy because we'll, we're we're Scott guys. So Scott likes him. Fine, we'll go Gabe Murphy. There you go. Uh, and then we'll we'll uh, we keep moving. One sixty four. Trevor Keegan mm. is here. Joe Ooh, Milton. Look at wide receivers now. Oh God. Yeah, no. wide receivers. Ah, uh, this is why Jeff took Luke McCaffrey. Keep going because down. He is lit. He is actually the yeah. best available. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. Yep. Take it in. Next pick. <laughs> Next pick. That's yeah, actually that terrible. Sense. Yeah, that is uh, Steel Chambers. There's Julian Pearl, <laughs> Frank Gore Jr. This Tanner is not the Frank Gore Jr. range. Yep, Frank Gore Jr. range, dude. Um, I'd say check corners or ed- edge again. Can you just keep scrolling a little bit, or does it stop? No, I mean I keep scrolling. I mean it's just it's a weird. Mayan Mayan Williams. Williams. Yeah, Mayan Williams. Oh. Uh, yeah, boys, we're this is bottom of the barrel, man. I mean Willie Roberts <laughs> out, of, out of Louisiana Tech. <laughs> I don't. I just do a straight. Hey, shout out with Jerry Sneed. Yeah, go go get us go, like a go get us a corner, corner in it. Yeah. Hey, what about a corner? tight end to replace Brock Wright? Ooh, Josh yeah, Wall first. I say go tight end. Johnny Dixon. Oh, tight end's a good one because they just they're going to lose Brock Wright probably. So we'll uh, Isaac Rex. <laughs> <laughs> where's uh where's you guys' boy from Iowa? Where's he at? I don't Eric want him. <laughs> yeah, I, where is Eric Hall? <laughs> I don't know. Don't even you don't even look. I don't care where he went. All yeah, right, Tanner from... McLaurin it is. Yeah, walk walk out of there with him, I guess. All right, 205. You know what? <laughs> get a kicker, kicker for sure. Oh, we gotta yep. go kicker here. Oh, get my boy. Yep. Come on. Yeah, get bring, my boy. Booner, bring bring him home. Mm-hmm. BP, we're we're doing BPA, right? Yup. And yeah, yeah this guys, I think we go tackle. Yeah, it's bad. This is a terrible draft. I think it's we go good. tackle. I'm feeling, yeah. I'm feeling a little Carson Barnhart. Knock it out. <laughs> Might it. as well. Might as well. <laughs> Why <laughs> not? Carson. This has got to be an F across the board. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is bad. Get that off the screen. <laughs> we got to delete this from the that screen. Might be, that, that might be – I'm going to throw this out there. That might be the worst BPA draft of all time. Yeah, that was just I don't even know if it was BPA. We were just picking. Yeah, that was just – Yeah, I don't think it was. <laughs> we we got to – you know what it is? We got to just be better, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I got to get in the <laughs> lab. Yeah. It's on us. That was on us. <laughs> hey, maybe I thought Barnhart was, you know, I didn't, I didn't know. I wasn't familiar. 
I, I know I stuff. Uh, just like Jeff said, like Skip would say, um, all in that's ass, but it'd be the other way. Hey, you know what I saw today, boys? What? And it wasn't even like by like a national outlet. It was more so like a fan page, but I was just like, they, they mock Brian Thomas to the Cowboys. And I saw you, that too. I think I saw it as well. That would be with him and CD. Mm. Mm. I saw the same thing. I thought oh, this, I was nasty. like, that's tough. Especially because they just lost Michael Gallup. They they get a guy. They, in a they don't have deal. Brandon Cook still, do they? Was he a that would be oh, a he was a two year actually? That would be a Cowboys pick. Just like I, I said, that shiny last, toy. Last mock shiny draft. Toy. What was it? Didn't I do that in our last mock draft? No, you took him I, to the. I, I want to say the Cardinals. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, I think you went to the Cardinals. I don't yeah. think it was Cardinals because because I had the, I had the Harrison Cowboys. Went. I had him. I had him taking a tackle. Yeah, it was because you took Harrison at three. And oh Mike yes. said, if he would have been there at four, I would have had a reunion of um our uh, two really good wide receivers. It would have been like no, because neighbors. No, you took neighbors at four. And you didn't take Brian Thomas with the Cardinals because you said you're like I almost oh, had yeah, a reunion. Right. I almost had a reunion of those two. I almost. Had I don't know. I I think I did. Uh, my notes here. Mm-hmm. I wrote down all the players that I drafted after I drafted them, and I'm pretty sure I took Brian Thomas to the Cowboys. I have them written down. Well, I stand. I stand down then, Gentry. My fault. Oh, stand down, Lucas. I know. I could be wrong. I could have totally not done it. No, I think you're all right. Three. Wrong. 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 All right. um, yeah, we'll 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 get to we'll get to mailbag here. Let's let's um let's start it <laughs> off. Sarah says mailbag favorite type of pie, cream. No, um, probably. <laughs> probably I mean, cherry. Come on, dude. Probably probably cherry for sure. Family show. <laughs> it's just can't, it's too quick. <laughs> we're supposed to be pro- we're supposed to be professionals here. Yeah, chocolate all right. pie. All right, bro. yo, that was actually <laughs> Lucas. That was fucking good, man. I don't even know. I, dude. I, I, Apple for pie. A second, I'm not gonna lie. I'm pumpkin pie fire too. Like, <laughs> like it's not, let's, uh, Jeff. When he said it, I was like, uh, okay. Anyway, I'm moving on. Um, I'll go pumpkin. I like pumpkin. Pie. This guy, dude. Mm-hmm. Apple. No pie. way. That's pie. your top pie, bro. Pumpkin, pumpkin pie is your top. Pumpkin. Well, uh, banana cream pie. Oh, now we're talking. Chocolate, <laughs> chocolate and immediately. pumpkin. You don't like pumpkin peanut, pie? Peanut butter pie? I don't. I don't Apple pie. pie like I it. had to like, it's like a coffee where you had to like acquire it with age. I got, I got to layer that thing with whipped cream or else. No, I can't. I'm, I'm cool. Not terrible, but I'm not, I'm not going on my Pumpkin's way. good. Dude. Sweet this. potato. Like, good. Peanut butter pie. Mm-hmm. Good. Mm-hmm. Pecan pie. Peanut good. Pie's great. No, pecan pie is trash. Good pies out there. Pies are good. Pies yeah, pies are good. Pies. One pies would say good. one of the most underrated desserts out there. Yep. I would, uh, yep, I agree. I like a good pie. Okay. Nice fresh apple pie is very good. Randy says, mailbag, why'd you guys mail it in? Uh, I don't know what that means, Randy, but we tend to mail do what that from time to time. I, I, you I know, I don't really know. <laughs> okay, though, Randy, like the question. Mike Reed, mailbag, you think Brad Holmes will trade for an elite cornerback like Patrick Sertan, uh, the second, or uh, all the boys can give their opinions? So I've been seeing that a lot too. Sertan to the Lions. Sertan to the Lions. Come on. I don't guy. think Brad's ever going to be a guy to give up a first round pick, and I think no. that's what he's he's going to command at least one, with his age and how good that he is and how productive. He hasn't really had any injury concern, so I, I as yeah. would I love it, yeah. But I would see like trying to think of a corner that's active in the NFL right now that I can see Brad trading for. That's good. Um, give give me a second. You guys keep going. I, I don't I don't see it. I, number one, I, I don't think the I don't think the Broncos were gonna unless they did they say they're gonna trade them. No, no, but at this think point, they, I think feel like they would have they would have moved off him in this offseason. Yeah, they, they, I'm pretty sure last keep. year there was a, a question though about him getting moved, anyways. So I think that was maybe why he asked that was because I think that was a yeah, but a rumor the last year or so. Yeah, I I don't think so, Mike Reed. I don't. I don't think so. To answer your question, um, I don't think so. But I do. I do still stand on my opinion from earlier that eventually Brad's going to have to. You got to. You got to spend money to make money. Not spending money isn't spending cap space money, but spending draft capital. 
um, which he has done. And I think in the future, there's going to be opportunities where you're, you're going to have to do that. But the first round pick thing, I do understand because it's a lot of value there. It just has to be the pro- a, a damn good player. Mm-hmm. Damn good. So And young. If you're trading a first round and pick, young. I think it's got to be a young player. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, Jeff, mailbag, if each NFL mascot was a scented candle, which which would be the most hideous smell? The Colts each? one. The Colts one. Without, <laughs> without, without a doubt. The Colts the one. That hideous so smell. Awkward. The Chiefs one's out there as well. The Chiefs Packers. one's fucking creepy looking. Um, but those yeah. are my creepy looking way. I'm confused. Oh, it's like, a mascot. It? I didn't see. No. Oh, mascot. I thought, I thought it was yeah. I thought it's it, that, you know, an, uh, NFL team. Oh, I thought it was coach. I don't know why I thought coach. No, but... it's it's um uh, it's <laughs> blue. Right. It's blue the mascot. <laughs> it's like the the big puffy, like it looks like a, a character from Sesame Street. Is that what you're talking about, Lucas? That the, that dude? The, yeah, it's, yeah, the thing's fucking yeah, weird. Yeah, he smells for sure. Yeah. Um uh he smells for sure. That, that, Matt Patricia could be a mascot, he smells pretty bad, I bet. Oh I do have an update. Oh, here you go. Why don't you let's jump in, Mike? What's going on with you? So I seen uh, our boy Randy in the chat asking about it earlier, a little update on the brackets. So we have a pretty interesting top three. I see Dante. He's in here right now. He is tied for second with you are, you are killing me smalls. They both are at 97.8%. Uh, one of them has Yukon and one of them has Houston, but they're both tied. Um, looking pretty solid, but number three, Happens to be our own Jeff Iafrady. No, no way. way. No way. No way. No way. And no Jeff actually has the second highest points total possible. Him and Smalls, and Dude, then it's Jeff Dante. Wins it. I might. I don't. I'm not gonna say that, but I was gonna say I might quit the show. <laughs> Jeff wins it, but yeah. I'm not gonna. And say my brother's that. actually the college basketball aficionado, the savant. <laughs> we have probably watched a combined half a quarter of college basketball this year. Oh, I've watched like hey, every uh, minute. I don't know why I didn't put two and two together. Randy Smalley or whatever. You're killing me, Smalls. That's him. So, uh, be wow. Jeff. Jeff hey, and Bird is absolutely. I'm nuts. in my bag like groceries. Hey, I'm pretty sure Randy oh, was see, the that's guy. Why, that, I mean, come on. I'm pretty sure Randy was the guy that. Signed up on Twitter after uh, we told him. I told him that he didn't need to, and he had a free pass. So he he doubled down, ended up Bro making a Twitter, of his entered it, plays. and now he's about to dub. So, that was like undrafted free agent to. <laughs> that's Kurt Warner. He's Kurt Warner. They wrote him yeah. off from the ah. CFL. Yeah. Like, Let me get this Twitter shit. Fuck. Yeah. Download it. I'm just catching dubs. That's awesome. So shout out to you, Randy. That's that's. I'm in the. Awesome. I'm in the. I'm in the conversation, boys. I'm in. Jeff there. just picked all favorites, and all the favorites have been winning. No, I did. No, I did. Well, I, I, thought, you, you about did. I thought about well, it. I thought about it. To be fair, it. though, all the favorites have been winning. I think outside of Arizona. Yeah, there's. Well, I just. I just. You told me Bo- you, Boone texted like me today, hey, boys. Make sure you fill out your brackets. So I sat there for like an hour, and I was just like, "All right, this." Uh, and I, I did do some research. To be fair, did a little bit. Which is no. And, and, and I'm day, saying. Which at the end of the day, March Madness, though. I mean, he just. I mean. Me, Jeff, dude. I want you to know this. Me saying you picking the favorites isn't a bad it. thing. It's kind that's how the brackets worked out this year. It's like there's been like the only big time upset in a team that's gone is. NC State, and they ended up actually winning tonight again to go to the Elite Eight. So, like everyone else, it's basically just been chalk all off the board. And in like my bracket, I tried to pick some, some, some crazy things, yeah. and it just I tried Iowa State. Or I guess Iowa State was two, and, and I, Illinois was three. But I'm pretty sure Illinois was a favorite, anyways. So, so yeah, like the whole like, top twenty, yeah, top twenty-five. It's it's third. Every everyone has UConn. Oh God. Um, everyone has you got in Houston, so uh, if that will kind of decipher, so if Houston kind of goes all the way, I think Dante will pull ahead. But if things kind of remain the way it is, I think Randy's taking the cake. I will so. say this I, I have Houston me? losing, I have Houston losing, boys. So, well, Jeff, he has more possible points than you, so I'm assuming your guys' brackets are kind of head to head. And hey. if you kind of did go all the way, I assume. Mr. Randy would take it all. So imagine if I win, I'm like, give me those tigers. To <laughs> no, if I win, if I win, I'm giving them to your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I'm not giving them to rich. you, or I'm giving them to your parents. No, I think I'm I kidding. think if one of us if win, win, it goes to the second place team. I would. 
I know. That's what I was gonna say. I was kidding. If I win, it's obviously. I'll take you to, to a the... Tigers game, though, Jeff. Yeah, it would. No, I, if, if I win, it goes to the second place. Win? Person. So regardless, you won't take me, Booner. It, well, if you win, <laughs> I will hey, take you. Know, I took Mike on a date today. Actually, I'm out. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh come on, <laughs> take, take me to a Jetty. Jetty, take me to a Wings game. I will. I mean, right, it's kind of late now, and <laughs> can we get one in still? Uh, I don't know if you you want to go to a Wings game. I would but... love to go. Go drink a couple beers, have a few brews. You've been to one this year, right? Uh, no, I'll see. It won't be empty, but they've just been playing. Well it's be. like a ghost. Town. Have I been to a Wings <laughs> game this year? I don't think I've been to a Wings. <laughs> Look at Roman. Oh. The Shout go. out the Booner Path, baby. Let's go. Absolutely. Super Bowl se- soupy season, man. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Roman's gonna be he's in the he's in the lab, dude. He still is. Every he's doing all kinds I of things. Man, man, man is the goat. He's probably cooking up a jersey swap right now. Uh well, I mean, I wish it would have been a Hassan Reddick jersey swap, but it's not the earth. Okay, we'll get out of here. We'll get, get out of here. here. Hey, we'll, we'll get out of here. Dude, um, don't be you, one dude. of the so well. So well. No, 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 no. But dude loves Marcus Davenport still. Fucking outrageous. And All right. Out well, uh, we'll get out of here. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back Monday. You Content will be posted all throughout the weekend. We got it all scheduled for you guys. So enjoy it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you Monday. Have a blessed night. Love you guys. And stay safe out there. Deuces. Peace. Peace.